2017 meeting Little Rock uh, Planning Commission uh, is now in session. Roll call vote, please. Chairman Berry? Here. Vice Chair Bubbas? Here. Commissioner Bonham? Here. Commissioner Cox? Here. Commissioner Dillon? Here. Commissioner Finney? Here. Commissioner Hamilton? Here. Commissioner Leahy? Here. Here. Commissioner Latour? Here. Commissioner Stebbins? Here. Commissioner May? Here. You have 11 members present. You do have a quorum? Thank to hear a motion for the minutes. Yes, I move for approval of the minutes from the March 16, 2017 meeting. I'll second. Those are, <clears throat> excuse me, those approve of the minutes uh, as written. Uh, raise your right hand. Those opposed, like sign. Okay. I did notice someone had a green card in their hand they wanted to submit, so please do so right now before we read the consent agenda. that, uh, Donna, could you please read the staff for consent agenda, please? Little Rock Planning Commission Subdivision Consent Agenda, April 27, 2017. Items for consent withdrawal. Item number 21, file number Z-9103-A, Small Emergency Hospital Short Form POD, located at 10115 Rodney Parham Road. The applicant submitted a request dated April 17, 2017, requesting withdrawal of this item without prejudice. Staff is supportive of the withdrawal request. Items for consent deferral, item B, file number LA-0074, Bowman Road at Executive Center Drive, advanced grading variants, located on the west side of Bowman Road at, at Executive Center Drive. The applicant submitted a request dated April 17, 2017, requesting deferral of this item to the June 8, 2017 public hearing. Staff is supportive of the deferral request. Item number 27, file number LA-0075, Spring Tree Subdivision, Advanced Grading Variants, located on located south of Ponderosa Drive and south of Spring Tree Drive. Staff recommends deferral of this item to the June 8, 2017 public hearing. Due to the lack of response by the applicant to comments raised at the April 5, 2017 Subdivision Committee meeting. Items for consent approval. Item number 1, file number S-1026-B, Lot Z-2-A-R, Little Rock Industrial District Replat, located at 2400 West 65th Street. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions, as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from section 36320 to allow a reduced platted building line for the lot. Item number two, file number S-1787, Quicks Lake Place, preliminary plat, located on the northwest corner of Simpson Lane and Stewart Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions, as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from section 31 to 32 to allow an increased lot depth to width ratio for, for the lot, for a proposed lot. Item number three, file number S-1788, Wellington Creek Subdivision, preliminary plat, located on the southeast corner of Chennault Parkway and Wellington Hills Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions, as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from section 30-31 and 31-210 to allow the drives on Wellington Hills Road and on Chennault Parkway with spacing and separation less than the typical development standards. Staff recommends approval of the variance request to allow the drive shared between lots one and two with a wider, uh, with a width larger than the typical ordinance standard. Staff recommends approval of the request to allow an in lieu contribution for the cost of the Boundary Street ordinance requirements for the widening of Canis Road and the request to pay the in lieu for the required bridge construction cost to both Canis Road and Chennault Parkway. Should the floodway floodway area be dedicated to the city prior to the request for final platting of the three lots. The developer is no longer required to provide the in lieu payment for the bridge construction. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from the city's land alteration ordinance to allow grading of all the lots with the development of the first lot. Item number four, file number S-1788-A, 
Come and Go Convenience Store Subdivision Site Plan Review, located at 15617 Chennault Parkway. Staff recommends approval of the request. Subject to compliance with the comments and conditions is outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from section 30-31 and 31-210 to allow the drive on Wellington Hills Road less than the typical development standard for a minor arterial street designation, including distance from property lines and distance between drives and driveway widths. Item number five, file number S-1240-0, Steve Landers Kia Dealership Subdivision Site Plan Review, located on the northwest corner of Colonel Glenn Plaza Loop. Staff recommends approval of the request. Subject to compliance with the comments and conditions is outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from the city's land alteration ordinance to allow grading of future phases with the issuance of building permit for the first phase. Staff recommend, recommends approval of the variance request to allow the elimination of the land use buffer along the western perimeter of the site. Item number six, file number Z-1620-A, B&G Properties, short form PID, located at 3401 through 3423 Mabelville Pike. Staff recommends approval of the request. Subject compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number nine, file number Z-5442-F, James Mitchell School, revised short form PCD, located at 2410 South Battery Street. Staff recommends approval of the request. Subject compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda uh, and the additional conditions as indicated by the Public Works staff in the analysis section of the agenda staff report. Item number 11, file number Z-6054-C, FITS Auto Expansion Revised Long Form PCD, located at 8421 Stagecoach Road. The applicant has addressed staff's concerns related to the site plan. The applicant is proposing the placement of an area for inventory storage and employee parking. The site plan will not include an area for it for an impound lot as previously indicated on the site plan. Based on the revisions to the site plan and the clear understanding of the applicant's intention uh, for the site, staff is now supportive of the request. Staff recommends approval of the request. Subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from the city's land alteration ordinance to allow grading of future phases with the issuance of a building permit for the first phase. Item number 12, file number Z-6060-A, Dash Heating and Cooling, Revised Short Form PDO, PDO located at 12417 Cantrell Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 13, file number Z-6318-E, Chennault Market Revised Long Form PCD, located at 16105 Chennault Parkway. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 14, file number Z-6488-B, KLR Properties Revised Short Form PCD, located at 12400 Cantrell Road. Staff recommends approval of the request to allow the addition of a restaurant as an allowable use for the site, provided the remaining uses and all previously proposed conditions remain as previously approved. Item number 15, file number Z-6860-E, Markham Harrison Property, short form PDO, located at 5307 A Street. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 16, file number Z-7091-A, Presbyterian Village, revised short form POD, located at 510 Brookside Drive. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 18, file number Z-8472-D, Midtown and Fair Park, revised short form PCD, located on the southwest corner of I-630 and Fair Park Boulevard. The applicant has amended their request to um, comply with some conditions and commitments that were made to the Uni University District Neighborhood Association. Those are outlined in a letter from the University District Neighborhood Association dated April 26, 2017. These items will be incorporated into the ordinance that is then, that will be forwarded on to the Board of Directors. And staff recommends approval of the request to allow the revision to the PCD plan commercial 
development zoning as amended by the applicant to allow the placement of the parking deck on the site and allow the small expansions as proposed on the site plan. Item number 19, file number Z-8737-C, David Storage Development Long Form QCD, located at 8222 Stagecoach Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from section 30-43 and 31-210 to allow the driveway nearer the property line than typically allowed. Staff recommends approval of the variance request from the city's land alteration ordinance to allow grading of future phases with the development of the first phase. Item number 20, file number Z-9023-B, 6608 Baseline Road, short form PDO, located at 6608 Baseline Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends all future users of the site match the parking available on the site. Item number 23, file number Z-9208, Graham Property Management, short form PDR, located at 1417 Cavanaugh Boulevard. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends the applicant provide a properly paved and landscape parking area within the rear yard area of the site. Item number 24, file number Z-9209, Arkansas Indoor Soccer, short form PID, located at 6611 Young Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 25, file number Z-9210, Lawson, short form PDR, located at 324 Walnut Street. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the right-of-way abandonment request for the southern five feet of C Street and the request for abandonment of a 10-foot access easement along the western boundary. And item number 28, file number MSP 1701, Master Street Plan Amendment to add a Class 2 bike lane and Class 3 bike route along 6th Street from Sherman Street to Shell Avenue and 9th Street from McMath Avenue to College Street, then along College to 17th Street, and along 17th Street to Barber Street. And I think Walter's going to do a small presentation. Commissioners, the, the title almost does the presentation, but the, the, the two amendments, one is on, the one that's up there right now is 6th Street, and basically it connects where there, where there are bikeways on 6th Street from uh, Shell to the east, and from Sherman to the west, uh, and it makes a class two uh, for the portion that where it crosses the freeway, and that's for safety because of the volume of vehicles that will be on the access roads uh, as you cross the freeway there. So for the bicyclists, and it will also help the safety of pedestrians that will be on the other side of the class two uh, uh, bikeway as it crosses the freeway. Uh, so basically, it connects that, that segment if you put up the other map, the other segment continues. Currently, 9th Street is a Class 2 on the Master Street Plan. Uh, and a Class 2, for those who may not be aware, a Class 2, a portion of the, of the roadway is dedicated to bicycles. There's a, a, usually a stripe on the road. And so four to five feet of the, of the paving of the road is dedicated for the sole use of bicycles, whereas a Class 3 is a Shero. You may have, when you've driven around the community, noticed a little symbol that's paint, painted in the in the street that has a bicycle as part of that symbol. Those are called Sheros, and that's a Class Three bike route uh, around the city. So this would continue the the current Class Two that's on Ninth Street back to the west, across the freeway again as a Class Two to get past the traffic, and then it would be a Class Three for the rest of the way on Ninth Street to College going down college and around to 17th Street where there's existing class uh, threes to the, to the elementary schools and the middle schools. They're both to the east and to the south of that intersection there at 19th and Barber, I mean, sorry, sorry, 17th and Barber. So that, that's the proposal is to make that loop there through college, uh, through Hangar Hill and then along uh, 6th Street uh, for a cl basically a class three route and then class two across the freeway to get through the traffic. Yes, staff. 
I was just going to suggest before the commission takes a vote on the consent agenda that you ask because there are people that have been coming in after you announced about filling out a card just to make sure that somebody's not here on one of those items that's on the consent agenda. Sure, I'd be happy to. Yes, if uh, you arrived uh, late while we were uh, reading some items uh, and you want to speak to it, uh, particularly in opposition, uh, be sure to fill out one of these cards. Does anyone has not filled out a card would like to speak? I have one there in back. And you can, okay. You don't want to, well, if you want to speak to something, that I, just, I need to see a card. That's, that's what I need to say. Have you filled out a card yet? Well, uh, staff, y'all might need to, to, to see what they have. And there was, a, there was a woman in the back who wants to speak too. Do you have a card you'd like to submit? She's what a, what she's is the item, ma'am? Okay, that, that's Graham property, so that one will need, need to come off the consent agenda. Okay, the one on Kavanaugh? Yes, sir. Okay. So Thank we're you, going... So... So we're going to pull item 23, the one on um, uh, 1417 Kavanaugh, Boulevard that will be moved from consent to regular agenda. It's, is there another item? If you, We're finding out about that one. Tony is checking out the uh, status of that. While we're waiting on, on the status of that item, I d we'll remind those uh, who are remaining for the regular agenda uh, that each side has 20 minutes to, to discuss whether it's opposition or if it's in support of the application. And so uh, I don't really see a whole bunch of cards right now, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. But I do want to remind everyone of the, uh, the limit, time limit of 20 minutes. Okay, you just receive another card. It's the baseline. It's already on there. <coughs> okay. Gotcha. So, so you would make a motion? Thank yes. You. Both of those are already on. No, just 23 is okay. Okay. So just go ahead and move for consent. All right. I think we've got everything down. I move for approval of the consent agenda with all staff recommendations and comments. Second. Okay, we have a motion for the consent agenda as read with staff recommendations. Uh, those approved signify by raising the Mr. right Chairman, hand. Mr. Chairman, I got a recuse on item 20. Yes, yes, sir. It'll be so noted. Those in favor of the consent agenda, uh, raise their right hand. Those opposed? Okay, and if, if you heard your item called the consent agenda, that means uh, you're welcome to excuse yourself. If you're not clear, if your item was on the consent agenda, please approach the dais and we'll help you with that too. But we will, in just a minute, 
uh, move to the regular agenda. Okay, if staff ready to proceed with the regular agenda, you'll need another minute. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed. Item number A, file number S-1786, Greenwood Edition Preliminary Plat, located at uh, 16400, in the 16400 block of Crystal Valley Road. The request is for preliminary plat approval to allow the creation of three residential lots from an existing 4.97 acre tract. Lots are proposed uh, containing one acre up to 2.17 acres. The, um, the lots are located outside the city limits of Little Rock and will be provided with sewer service, will not be provided with sewer service from the city. As required by the subdivision ordinance, the applicant has provided a letter indicating based on the soil suitability test, each of the three lots will support a subsurface septic system. Upon approval of the preliminary plat and prior to the issuance of the 911 address, by the county, the applicant must provide the septic tank permit approval from the Arkansas Department of Health. The lots are proposed with access and utility easement 20 feet wide along the eastern boundary of the lots, which is Lovia Lane. The development of the lots, as proposed, will require variance from section 31-231 to allow lots two and three to develop as lots without public street frontage. The ordinance states lots are to abut a public street except where private streets are explicitly approved by the commission. Staff is supportive of the applicant's request to allow the platting of the lots as proposed. The site is located outside the city limits of Little Rock, but within the extraterritorial planning jurisdictions, the lots is indicated with adequate area to meet the typical setbacks of the R2 single family zoning district. The plat as proposed allows for the proper land area for septic system installation for the future homes. Staff feels the plat as proposed is appropriate and staff recommends approval of the request. Subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D and F of the agenda staff report, staff recommends approval of the variance request from section 31-231 to allow lots two and three to develop as lots without public street frontage. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Uh, could you come up and state your name? We only have one card in opposition, so if you want to wait to hear uh, the rest and who voices concern and then, and then speak to that, you're welcome to do that. Uh, Daniel Greenwood. Daniel Greenwood. Okay. Uh, 
Why don't we go ahead and hear what the uh, uh, the gentleman wants to speak to this application. Go ahead and have a seat and you can respond to that. Robert Cochran? Yes, that's me. Okay. So I guess I, I want a clarification because uh, from what I understood what she just read is that maybe the access to the lots is going to be from Lavinia Lane? So my objection was when the access was going to be from the west side of the property because we own the property to the west of that. And so that was our issue is that originally on that diagram it says that the, um, there would be a 20-foot easement there on the west side of the property. Um, so if that's no longer part of it, no longer an issue, then uh, the only thing is uh, would be as far as uh, it appears that they're doing a lot of clear cutting if there could be some kind of vegetative uh, border there. Okay. Uh, would the applicant like to get up and speak to the second issue you raised about regarding buffering? I heard by surveyor we got an ingress egress on the west side also mm -hmm. of our property. Um, I really didn't hear the second. <laughs> uh, the the question he has is, but what kind of vegetation for screening and buffering would you have on the side facing him? Uh, well, he, Greenwood, could you please speak into the mic? Oh, sorry. Thank you. And address the commission. <laughs> yes. As, His uh, second question was, you're doing a lot of clear cutting on the property. Uh, will there be any vegetation that's replanted? But the property is proposed as developed with single family. So single family is not required a buffer and not required okay. any replanting. Right. Yeah, I took out trees just for my backyard for my kids to play. Um, we basically, if we want to plant some more trees for sound barriers for Crystal Valley, that's what my wife wants to do. But as far as taking out any more trees, you know, we're probably – 40, 50 foot from his property line as far as we left trees up, so. Um. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? I hear a motion. So, I'm sorry. I guess I'm confused. Is there still going to be any egress on the west side of the property or no? I think automatically we still have a ingress, egress on the west side of the property. He, he need, you need to speak into the microphone. Thank I you. I think we all we still have an ingress egress on the west side of the property as far as 20 foot from our property line. Am I correct on that, Mr. Lawton? 30. 30 foot. Okay. So, so, so for clarification, I think what I'm hearing is that, that the concern being uh, initially is the entry points going to be on your side of the west side but now it looks like the entry points into the properties are, is on lovia lane Correct. that's the first issue so i think we've resolved that second issue is i think what you're saying is that there's still an egress right that you've got on the west side of the property but is that a driveway is that going to be your everyday entry point or is that just an no, access sir. space no sir there's nothing gonna be done back there okay and then secondly, is there, are there trees that are going to be between in that area, so a tree buffer zone between the west side property and your properties? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, did I understand it was going to be 30 feet? Oh, it's showing 20, uh, 20 foot ingress, egress here. What we have is, uh, excuse me, Ed Lofton, an engineer, we have a 30-foot ingress egress on the west side, and we have a 10-foot ingress egress easement on the east side, trying to work out where we can use Lavodia Lane, and that's his, where he wants to. But unless the adjacent neighbor, we, he can work that out, then we'll have would have to use the west ingress egress. So, question for staff: Does that need to be reflected in this application now? Uh, before it moves. I think he's asking for flexibility to, to have the access on either side. And so I think the, the question to the commission is, do you support the 30-foot, as, as Mr. Lofton has noted in the drawing is incorrect, for access to the two lots that do not have public street frontage on the west side? Okay. And that's where my opposition comes in is I don't have any problem with this development if they're having access 
a daily access from Lavinia Lane, but if that access is going to be from the west side of the property, then I'm definitely opposed to this because that affects the use of my property as well. Okay. That's I don't noted. plan to have any access from the west side. All our access was come from the east side, our front. Our house is going to be facing towards LaVia Lane. So are you removing from your request the access easement along the western property line? Well, I don't think I'd do that Cook, unless, you get, unless you can get an agreement with your neighbor. You're going to have to use the west side. And there's no requirement for the half of any, so, uh, anything. Don't request that. And there's no request. No, no request. So you're not going to? No, ma'am. Any other questions, commissioners? I have one to Mr. Lofton. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does that ingress, egress easement on a, where's the water service coming from? Where's the water line out there? That hadn't been determined as far as I know. Do you, do you know which wet side? Is there, no, is there is it going an exist? On the west side or the east side? I'm not for sure. They're uh, they was waiting for the approval of the Lafayette County. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think well, that if more than likely it'd be from the west side, it would be the logical place, I would think. I can't go along within that 30 foot ingress and egress zone if you're going to have to bring water down. It has to be more than that. I'll vote against it. How much does it have to be, sir? 25, it used to be 25 foot for each lot. Be a minimum of 50 foot. On the west side? Wherever the water line's coming in. It has to be water, 50. Even, even on the east side or the west side, huh? Well, if it's in, if, it, if it's in the public right away on Lovey Lane, that won't be required, but if you're going to come across these other lots, you have to have it. It's really not a public right way on the east side. That is not a public. That is a private drive on the east side. But they have water somehow. The, that house down low. Mr. Lane. Chairman, maybe it's maybe it's just me, but it seems like the smart thing for you guys to do is go 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 take a time out, defer this thing, and come back because you don't have enough really to answer some questions. If I had to vote today, I'd vote no, even though it seems like a fairly simple project. But you don't have enough on here for, there's too much dissension and too much unknown for, at least for my comfort. So my suggestion is come back. Well, the applicant has the option to request deferral, or you can, we can go ahead and move with the vote as we see it. I'd have to ask the client what he prefers. Applicant, please, please, you want to come up here? I, I have a question for staff. On this easement that we're talking about for utilities, is that not going to have to go through another layer of approval before? I mean, they could hold them up on another issue besides a planning issue, correct, if the utility easement is not proposed correctly? If they propose it for 20 feet and it's supposed to be 50, they're not going to be able to move forward with it, correct? Right. Prior to final plat approval, they will have to have all the utility sign-offs that... Right. So I, I'm, I'm just... if I don't know that I feel comfortable holding them up if that's, if that's the issue. If, if, we're, if we don't like the application because of the access on the west side of the property, I, I, don't, I don't know that I would vote against it for that reason, but... If that's the issue, I can see it, but I, I think someone else is going to fix this issue with the utilities. Correct. I, I've spoken with gas and water company, and I already have electric out there on the property. So water company, I put my application in two weeks ago, and they were just, I guess, a case of saying approval upon the county, you know, and everything. So I don't know if they're going to come off the east side because uh, of the property. Um, so okay, I'm so it's 30 here. foot ingress egress easement. We, we want to say 20, it's 30 on the west side, as we have on the plan right now. Which, which, which could change at the, the next um, 
level of hearing based on what the utilities determine. So what I'm asking you is do you want to vote now or, n or not on this? Well, I don't want to vote if y'all going to go against me. But <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, we don't do we don't do straw we don't do straw polls. So uh. <laughs> explain to him what the difference is if he gets what he has to wait. Well, staff, can you tell us what the uh, what happens? If you're denied today, you have to wait one year before you can refile an application unless it's substantially different. Well, if he no. defers it, then we would coordinate with who to decide what we need to do for the next meeting. Is we would, you right, but we'll we'll get with the utility companies and get them to firm up what it is, what easements that they want, and which where the utilities are coming in from, and whether we need this access along the west side or not. Okay, so we, we won't hold up the water. So, so the water company, if they say it's coming on the east side, then that hold up would be resolved. What, so what right? are you What are you asking to do? Defer. To defer. defer. I, I, I'm just going to. I'm going to vote for you. I don't know what everybody else is going to do. I appreciate. But you. I, to me. I, you're trying to, to get it on the east side of the boundary. If the neighbor won't work with you, you're going to have to go to the west side. I apologize. He's trying to be a good neighbor. It's all he can do. But if he's going to do this development, um, he's got to do what he's got to do. So the I'm thing on the east side, uh, we have a, you know, this is the whole reason we're going through all this this month. But with the east side, we had a verbal with the neighbor because the road is 654 foot of what, my five acres is on, and I own 551 foot, but they own the entrance. That was the biggest holdup in this whole situation. So we have an agreement with them, uh, but now this is the issue, right. I guess. Is there a motion to defer? Second. All right, we have a motion to defer this item until June 8th. Those in favor of the deferral signify by raising their right hand. Those opposed? <laughs> okay. Your application is deferred. Okay. All right. Next I item is item number seven, the racket club. File number Z-1840-D, Little Rock Racquet Club, Long Form PDO, located at 1 Huntington Road. The request is a rezoning from R4 Two Family to PDO Plan Development Office to allow Little Rock Racquet Club to add parking to their existing site. The proposal is to allow an expansion of ground level parking in addition of a single story parking deck over the existing parking lot. With the construction, there will be a total of 64 spaces on the ground level and 29 on the upper level of the parking deck. There are 12 spaces proposed within the new surface parking lot for employee parking only. The plan indicates the placement of signage and a gate to ensure employee only parking. The applicant has indicated the parking structure will be constructed of a brick veneer to match the existing clubhouse and precast concrete parapet walls. The wall height is proposed 5 feet 6 inches. The applicant indicates landscaping will be placed around the perimeters of the parking deck. All existing fencing. Uh, is proposed to remain. A large portion of the existing buffer also proposed to remain. A portion of the property is covered under the Bill of Assurance. The Bill of Assurance states there's to be a 35-foot green buffer strip along Huntington Road. Uh, no trees or shrubs are to be removed from that portion on Lot 118 that is to be maintained as the buffer except for normal cutting and shearing of tall grass and underbrush. There, um, that shall remain as an attractive green buffer strip between Huntington and the balance of Lot 118. The surface parking lot is located outside the area designated by the Bill of Assurance as a green buffer. Also, the Bill of Assurance states Lot 118 is to be used only as private parking lot for automobiles for and in conjunction with the private club facilities. The Bill of Assurance also states no building or structure of any type may be placed, erected, or used on any portion of said lot. This prohibition is to apply to any pave is not to apply to any paving or to any business or structure that may be placed on the said lot that is used exclusively by a public utility company in connection with furnishing of public utility services to the Foxcroft addition. The parking deck has been redesigned and does not extend onto lot 118. Staff is supportive of the applicant's request for the parking deck and the uh, surface parking lot. Staff feels the parking deck and parapet walls will be constructed in such a manner as to limit the impact onto the new 
of the new construction onto adjacent properties. Staff recommends approval of the request subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Thank you, staff. Is the uh, agent for the application here? Also, there, there are two cards in opposition. Uh, each side, of course, has 20 minutes. You're welcome uh, to yield and uh, listen to the uh, opposition before coming back. Thank you, Chairman Berry. Commissioners, my name is Scott Shellhorn. I'm an attorney with Mitchell Williams Law Firm, and I'm here on behalf of the Little Rock Athletic Center's LLC, who owns the Little Rock Racquet Club. Mr. Frank Lawrence, who's the CEO of Little Rock Athletic Centers, is here with me. Uh, as, as you've uh, you heard Ms. James explain, we're here to seek a rezoning of the existing campus solely to permit these existing office or the, the new office improvements. The, the Racquet Club has no intent to change the use of the property. It'll remain a tennis and swimming and, and fitness facility that it has for the past 50 years. Uh, the Racquet Club determined that the on-site parking is necessary to, to serve its members and, and frankly, to serve its neighbors, uh, who, you know, the, the, the members at busy times end up parking down the hill on uh, Huntington Road, uh, and uh, many of the members are, are young families, young children who park on the street and, uh, you know, with the young children and all the gear that goes along with them, wag them up the hill to the swimming pool in the summertime. Uh, it, it's quite a trip. So relocating the, uh, the minivans and SUVs off of Huntington Drive in the neighborhood streets, putting them on site uh, makes, uh, you know, just adds to the safety both of the patrons and the members in the neighborhood. Quick background, the Racket Club has operated from this site since 1967. They're celebrating their 50 year anniversary this year. And as its name suggests, it caters to, uh, to the tennis aficionado and from, from all around the area. In 1999, the club was, was purchased by the Riley family and it began operating on a for-profit basis at that time. And the Foxcroft neighborhood was planned and grew up around the racket club. Um, so, so this has been there since its inception. Uh, now, the, the racket club representatives met with first individually with uh, neighbors to the east to explain and display the plans and answer any questions. And then subsequently, there was a, a meeting held where all the neighbors were invited. And uh, again, plans were displayed, questions answered. Plans were, were modified to address concerns that were received from the, uh, from the neighbors. Additional changes were made to comply with the restrictive covenants you just heard and to fully comply. And uh, the comments were addressed from the planning department again, as you've just heard. Um, uh, Mr. Malone, could you show the elevation that, that we sent? There have been, been some, some minor changes to the elevation in that it, it uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, so the, now the, um, uh, the, the wall, the east facing wall toward the homes on, uh, on Foxcroft Drive and is, is, is full. So it's a complete wall on the east side. It'll, the, the brick veneer will run all the way to the top. Uh, the bricks will be identical to those on the building. The intent there is to avoid any additional light coming out of the, out of the parking deck and to minimize any kind of noise that's coming out of there. Uh, the second floor, uh, the, the, the parapet wall will be high enough to, to block any sort of uh, uh, headlights coming out of the vehicles. So, as I said, granting this, this uh, application permits the racket club to move, its on, move parking to on-site accommodate the members and reduce parking on the neighborhood streets. And this provides safety and convenience for all the stakeholders with very minimal impact to the neighborhood. And we ask that the application be granted. And, and I do care to reserve the rest of my time, please. And certainly answer any questions. Thank you. We have uh, two cards who wish to speak uh, against the application. Uh, uh, keep in mind that there's a 20 minute total limit uh, for all that. And so uh, I don't think it'll be an issue, but we have Jonathan Horton uh, up to speak. My name is Jonathan Horton. This is my son, Harrison. He's one of four reasons I'm here before you today. Harrison, we live at 3010 Foxcroft Road. 
And we, if you go back to the um, site plan, you can see our house. We are directly east, uh, next door to Nelson and Patricia Reinhardt. We have four kids. We've lived there since 2007. Regrettably, we're back in front of you because two years ago, we went through this same song and dance. At that point in time, we met with the folks of the Racket Club. We agreed on plans to improve the parking. They did nothing to expand on those plans except build the current parking structure in the rear of the facility that is presently under construction. They changed nothing about their surface parking. And having told us previously if we would consent to their conditional use permit changes, which we did, they would not develop Lot 118. So we move forward. Here we are 18 months later, and they're coming back now again, putting in that what they seek to do is to put a parking garage, basically a parking lot immediately behind uh, Patricia Reinhardt and her son Craig, who's here today, behind their home. The Reinhardts and the Hortons are not in favor of this. Uh, Ms. Reinhardt has lived there since the neighborhood was first developed, and she is adamantly opposed because of extensive drainage issues that they've had at her property. She has had to install over $8,000 worth of drainage in the past three years as a result of discharge and leakage from one of the corners of the existing parking lot. And she is opposed to it. We're opposed to it because they essentially, when this, this, when this was initially filed, staff came in and said they disagreed with it in part because I had pointed out that they ignored the Bill of, of Assurances entirely and, had, and now they've come back and apparently modified to correct those issues at least. But staff, one of the reasons staff gave for its initial opposition to the project as proposed was they thought it would inconvenience the neighbors. Nothing about having the parking lot on lot 118 there has changed. This is not a normal office facility where someone comes in as you're leaving going to work in the morning and they go home when you arrive home at night. Their hours start at 5 a.m., a little before usually when their folks arrive to open up because they're open at 5. They close at 10 p.m. Monday through, Monday through Thursday and at 9 p.m. on Fridays. They reopen at 8 and go until 8 all weekend long. Folks come, folks go. They have contractors who come in and work after hours. So there are folks there beyond 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday and are there after 9 on Friday. As a result, we fully expect that there are going to be Folks coming and going, there's going to be continued noise and lights that are going to affect the surrounding neighbors. We've had continuing issues with garbage service. As you will see in the, in the corner of the present drawing there of that deck where, where the sign says parking deck, there's an area that's shaded out in the corner of the lot. That's where the dumpster is, right next to the neighbors. And I can tell you that Harrison knows when the trash truck comes on Thursdays. Why is that? Because they pick it up and they drop it. We've had to call waste management. We've had to call the racket club. The, the reality is this is a club who started as a small nonprofit. They started with the goal of supporting the Foxcroft neighborhood. With the most recent acquisition, they're no longer a small neighborhood nonprofit. They're a for-profit business, and they're one of four of a chain of four health centers in central Arkansas. They're zoned R4 right now. They've always been zoned R4. R4 is residential single family. They're operating under a conditional use permit that is designed to apply to neighborhood nonprofits. I don't oppose them changing to an office because it makes more sense for them to be an office. But I do oppose the additional development when they have had previous options that are completely unexplored and approved by the neighbors, but not taken advantage of. As part of their becoming a chain, what was once a neighborhood facility that was supported by the neighborhood and existed for the benefit of the neighborhood has now become a reciprocal membership club so that if you're a member of the Little Rock Athletic Club, the North Little Rock Athletic Club, the Downtown Athletic Club, 
for an additional $40 a month, you can now come and use the facilities at the racket club. That's why they have parking issues now. It's not because the neighborhood has changed. It's not because the support has changed. It's because they've opened their doors, not just to the neighborhood, but to the county in general. As a result, they're asking us, the neighbors who've been there for years, to bear the impact of their decision to make more money. And we believe that this is not something that is harmonious with the neighborhood. Foxcroft is known as a neighborhood that has green space and has tree-lined streets. Their, pro their proposal basically uh, eliminates most of the green space that exists currently on Lot 118. They've been, they, we haven't seen any landscaping plans filed yet, so we, have, we can't speak to what their intentions are. Maybe they're going to leave some, maybe they're not, but as it's proposed right now, I don't see how they can leave many of the trees that currently exist on Lot 118. The, um, the compatibility with the surrounding area, having grown now to be one of a chain of athletic clubs, they are now in tension with the, the surrounding area. The surrounding area is entirely residential. It has always been that way. And as a result, we feel like we, the neighbors, are being asked to bear the burden of their business decisions to expand, to grow, and to open their doors to anyone who wants to pay an additional $40 a month. I would cede my time to Mr. McSpadden. Thank you, Walter McSpadden. I'd like to just second almost everything Jonathan said. I do have a question for staff, though. As a planned development that goes to the next owner correct so if someone here's my here's my one question that I'm asking suppose they get into financial trouble the bank forecloses am I gonna have a dentist office in my backyard no the plan developments are site and use specific so if you do not ask for it you do not get it so the only thing it could be transferred but the only way it would be transferred at would be as an athletic club that's currently used. Okay, mm -hmm. good. I just wanted to confirm that. Uh, I've lived there for 25 years. I have nothing against the, against the racket club. My children grew up there. My oldest son was a competitive player. I, I, it's, I'm glad they're there. They are definitely a benefit to our neighborhood. But let's not kid ourselves. This stuff about helping us out by building a two-story parking deck is nonsense. They're trying to make more money. They're a for-profit. I have no problem with them making more money, but let them make it at the athletic club instead of in my backyard. I'm at number five. I hear the pools flash. In the summertime, those cars are parked all the way down the street. They're going to build this deck, and that's going to solve the problem for this summer. But when they add 250 more members, there's going to be that much more noise, that much more traffic, and they're going to be all the way back down Huntington again. So I don't hear anything in here about them agreeing to cap their membership, them agreeing to stop this business about letting all of the members of all of the clubs use the racket club. The racket club was designed as a neighborhood amenity, as Jonathan said. It was not designed as a for-profit athletic club in the middle of a residential neighborhood that's been there for 50 years. So I'm very much opposed to this, and I believe that just about everyone in the neighborhood is. Uh, so, do what you will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McSpadden. The applicant, wish to come back up, please. I'll, I'll respond to, to the points. Um, first of all, as to lot 118, which is where the surface lot is planned, the, the, the uh, Restrictive Covenants, a Bill of Assurance, specifically permits that lot to have paving on it. It was intended to be used as a parking lot with the specific requirement that a 35-foot undisturbed butter, buffer, excuse me, not butter, buffer, be placed there. That's exactly what's planned intentionally. And uh, the, the growth, the, the trees, uh, the, the uh, uh, other vegetation that's there must stay per the covenants. 
And if it doesn't stay per the covenants, it, it's actionable. Um, the, 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 the drainage, it, uh, Mr. Malone, there's a drainage plan. Uh, he explains it is going to uh, cause a, a concern. I think it's the middle one. Yes. Uh, would, would cause an issue draining into the Reinhardt's home. Uh, I, I suggest to you that the drainage, the, the placing the lot there will in fact enhance the drainage as it currently sits. Uh, currently, the, that is undeveloped. The water runs basically up on, on this drawing and runs into the corner there by uh, the Reinhardt's driveway. The, uh, as to where the, the impervious paving is there where the parking lot's going, that water is going to flow through down through that there that way into the drive and then out into the uh, into the public storm sewer system. So the water that used to go on that hill run down into the Reinhardt's driveway uh, won't, won't do that anymore. Uh, and so that, that that's going to be reduced. There, and of course the the remainder of the, the parking the deck is sitting on top of an existing impervious parking lot anyway. So the, there's no particular additional, at uh, least material additional addition of uh, impervious parking. Uh, the, the, the use of the property, keep in mind that I, I was specific and I think their characterization of this being a neighborhood uh, benefit, nonprofit, is, is not completely correct. Uh, this is not, you know, the, the, the neighborhood pool and the single tennis court that sits in a little park by a, a small subdivision, uh, you know, that, that many Little Rock uh, subdivisions have. That's not this, and it never has been. This was designed as essentially a country club, but instead of a golf course, it has tennis courts. And anybody who wanted to join and qualified for membership to the country club, here a racket club, could join, whether they lived in, in, uh, in the Foxcroft neighborhood or not. So don't, don't, don't take that this was just a little neighborhood pool this is, and a small single tennis court. This was always intended to be a, a, a large tennis center. As to the reciprocal making huge tons of money, since 1999, uh, what would it, eight years before Mr. Horton moves into the neighborhood, this has been a, a for-profit operation with reciprocal rights to the Little Rock Athletic Club, the North Little Rock Athletic Club, and the Downtown Athletic Club. Those reciprocal rights existed before Mr. Uh, Mr. Horton moved into the neighborhood. So to complain about them now is, is a little disingenuous. The, the, the compatibility with the neighborhood, I mean, you, you heard Mr. McSpadden say he's glad it's there, does a great job, and, and then complained about the parking. Uh, this is what we're trying to solve. Uh, continuing to grow 200 more members next summer or 400 the following, it can't happen because, as Ms. James explained, this property is now limited as to what it can do and what can be there by this very rezoning. So we are naturally limited by, by the facilities that are there. So there's a cap on how many people this can serve. And uh, with this parking, we should be able to serve the, the bath to, to capacity of, of, the, uh, of the club. This will benefit the neighborhood. This will help remove cars from the neighborhood streets. That enhances the safety of the members, it enhances the safety of the neighbors, and reduces the inconvenience of people trying to come and go. Uh, this to me is, is a very clean, helpful, honest sort of thing that, that's going to make the neighborhood better. And I'm willing to address any questions. Commissioners, any question of the applicant? How many additional spaces will this be? 64. About 39 additional spaces. Can I get a question on the drainage part? Is, uh, is, the, is your engineer here with you? Yes, he is. 64 there. Would you like to talk to him? <laughs> I'd kind of like to ask him a question. What has he got going on with the drainage out there, if I may? I'm, this I'm, this I is just Jim wanna... Summerlin, who serves. While Jim's coming up, 
I, I just want had a question for staff. You said 39, and I'm showing 64 in our surface parking. That's already there. Oh, the, it says that's already there. That's not additional then. So mm -hmm. 39 is the additional. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the 20 whatever on the top level of the deck plus the 12 employee spaces. Okay, thank you. If, if we could please, have the yeah, uh, please state your name too, uh, Jim Summerlin. Okay. Uh, if we if we could have the drainage plan, please. That's it. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> that is oriented 90 degrees, different from what the overall plan is. So, north is to the left instead of straight up. The uh, that lot 118 uh, parking lot, which is on the top side there. Uh, you can see where the contours are sloping downward towards Ms. Reinhardt's house, which is on the north side of the property line. That's, that's the way the property is currently. So she gets drainage off of all of that lot 118 area now, currently. And with the, and the parking lot, which will go on lot 118, you know, the, the, any, any of the any, uh, storm drainage that comes onto that lot is going to be contained and it won't be it won't be flowing towards her property anymore. It'll it'll go according to the red lines we've got there, uh, which shows uh, an inlet there at the uh, that'd be the north east corner, and then a pipe underground going over to an underground detention area underneath the existing parking area where the parking deck would be located, and then that'll all drain out a flume there, an existing flume which is there now. And it'll be draining out onto the uh, into, onto the drive that that enters the racket club, which is where, where it goes now. So the drainage, as far as Ms. Reinhardt next door, is going to be less drainage on her property than what it is now. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> other commissioners, I, I will say that I, even though that was very compelling. I am in support of the, the additional parking and my experience living right next to tennis courts for almost what eight years when they have those events they get parked up and down the street and I agree with your point there with that that hopefully this could move some of that parking into the lot however I'm I'm not really thrilled about the location of the dumpster being that close to the home and th that's been the location of the dumpster for as long as I can remember uh, it, 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 it's been there, and certainly efforts have been made by the Racquet Club to uh, encourage its vendor to come at a different time, and uh, calls have been made by the Racquet Club uh, management as well. Commissioner Latour. Is this a question for staff? Are you still recommending denial, and if so, what's your logic? I change it to a yeah. No, it... As we explained in the agenda meeting, we are now recommending approval because they've redesigned that surface lot and they're respecting the 35 foot buffer. And also the surface lot will be limited to employees only. So that, that kind of restricts the use and lessens the potential impact. So SAS recommending approval. You know, any other questions? I, I still don't understand why maybe that dumpster couldn't be moved. I think that would be an approval to their situation with this construction. I think that would be a... Oh, no, I'll, let, I'll let others speak. Okay. Well, that's cogitating a, a Commissioner May. As a good neighbor that you'd like to be, isn't there somewhere else you could put the dumpster? As a... I... I, I... I'm not standing here prepared to answer that question. I do know there are limitations on where dumpsters can go in, with respect to where the trucks can get to dump them. Um, so it's not like you can just tuck them into a little corner. You've got to have a way to get the truck in, do the dump, get back out. Uh, that's certainly something that, that can be further explored. Uh, but I, as, as I say, this location has been <coughs> where the dumpster has been primarily because that's where the truck can get. It can come around a corner, down a hill, to the dumpster, make the dump, and then come back out. I just thought it'd be a good thing. I, as a crow flies, I probably am a quarter, half a mile from Kroger at 4 o'clock. I hear them 
every morning. Well, I, I'm in a similar position. I'm about two blocks from, from, from other ones, and I, I hear them that early as well. And it's one of those issues of living anywhere close to something other than a middle of a residential neighborhood. And uh, it's, it's just a, a condition of living in a city. And uh, I, I certainly appreciate very well the problem, but it, I, I don't know that it's necessarily something that can be modeled. Or, or, uh, Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, yes, um, I've been a member of the Racquet Club for more than 20 years, and I can't say enough good things about the staff and the, um, the facility. And I'm one of those parents that had to park on the road and drag my two girls up the hill with floaties and sunscreen yes. and towels. Excuse me, you're going to have to remember we decide you'll have to recuse. If yes, you're, I, I, I know. So I'm that going to recuse. You can't, you can't speak during the discussion. Oh, I'm I, sorry. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Any of the commissioners? Well, before we get a motion, I, you know, I, I imagine staff is considered act, uh, dumpsters, and they always do. Uh, the question of access is uh, you're not going to have any turnaround uh, except the perimeter of this property for dumpsters, and I would imagine staff has thought through that issue as well. I, I'm, I'm having some heartburn over that because I'm looking at this parking lot, and there's a lot of areas you could have that dumpster. And I, I'll just, I'm not allowed to negotiate, but I, ju I just think it's the right thing to do with, with doing this parking deck and this new construction. I don't think it's going to be hard to move that dumpster. I will support this item, but I'm not going to support it with that dumpster right there. I think that's a small token of good faith and goodwill. It's not going to hurt you uh, as the as the applicant, and I just think it's the right thing to do. For, so, th that's Mr. Bubbis, if my I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. I mean, we okay, we can pledge that we will examine the circumstances and see the best we can do to relocate it to a different place on the. If, and, if and, you'll and if the you'll pledge, I'm not that. allowed to negotiate, but I can say what I can support if I'm correct. If I will support an application with that dumpster moved. And you guys can figure out where to put it. Otherwise, I'm not going to support it. I just think, again, I'm. No. Well, they, uh, the, as, as chair, they, they, you would have to amend it very specifically, and, and I, I don't think there's any anything that we can specifically amend at this point. Uh, although your your general intention is wanting to move it, the yeah, applicant can't say where or if it can be moved. He could say it won't be there. Well, that's up. That's up to the applicant. The, the, the uh, is, is, um, Mr. Lawrence points out, moving it from here puts it in someone else's back door. I mean, that, that's the fact. There, there are residences all around this property. Uh, and, and so the, the issue is, is here. It's, I mean, the, there's residents everywhere. Um, you can, we could move it from behind Mr. Horton's house to behind Mr. McSpadden's house, I suppose. Um, uh, but there's really nowhere else to put it that is not in in someone's backyard. Uh, is, is that a true Chairman. statement, staff? I don't know. It is? Okay. All right. I'll support it. Well, okay. I, I'm just going to trust staff with that. I can't dive into that. I've, I've yeah. fought as best I could, so I'm going to trust staff okay. with their comments on let's, that. Uh, let's stay focused, uh, Commissioner Cox. Yeah, uh, yes, I was going to say, since that's not part of the application, it's just simply the parking, I would suggest we not dwell on the, uh, the ancillary issues of the where the dump is, and I think right. that's a matter uh, separate from what we've been required to request a vote on at this time. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion then. I move for the approval of item seven with all staff recommendations and comments. I'll second. All right, we had a motion to approve the application as uh, applied and with staff recommendations and has been seconded. Those uh, approve the motion uh, signify by raising your right hand. I will recuse for being a member. And we have two recusals. Do you get the count on the and those opposed? Commissioner Leahy. So what was the count? The city attorney trying to make a statement? Were you trying to make a statement, Mr. Excuse attorney? Me. Excuse me, Commissioner Leahy. I'm trying to get an answer to the question. Eight eyes, one no, two recusals. Okay. Counselor, were you trying to make a statement? 
there was a question. Jonathan wanted to come back and respond to. He had 11 minutes left to respond to what. You know, this is not as, as standard protocol. We we don't do rebuttals. Okay. Thank you. Next item is item number 10, the uh, Methodist Children's Home. Well, item number eight. Item number eight. Oh. <laughs> Excuse item, me, item eight. Item My number apologies. eight, file number Z-2306-B. Hawkins short form PCD, located at 600 East 21st Street. In uh, September 1969, the Board of Adjustment approved a variance to uh, permit an expansion of the existing non-conforming structure. The approval allowed a 20 foot by 25.8 foot addition to the rear of the building. August 20th, 1975, uh, 1973, the Zoning Board of Adjustment approved a request for a variance to permit an expansion of the non-conforming structure. The approval allowed a 12 foot by 36 foot building expansion along the east side of the building. The approval also allowed the placement of a 17 by 16 foot carport along East 21st Street to serve as drop off. The approval allowed 6.5 foot setback from East 21st Street. Uh, staff, at the time, staff's recommendation included the applicant surface all parking and drives and install a six-foot fence along the north and east sides of the property to provide screening. screening. Adjacent property owners opposed the placement of the fence and signed statements stating the screening was not wanted. The Board of Adjustment approved the request presented by staff with the exception of the placement of the fencing. The current request is to rezone the property from R4 to family to PCD plan commercial development to allow the use of the site as a community event center. The building is proposed to be used by those wishing to sponsor senior programs, youth programs, baby showers, class events, family reunions, neighborhood sessions, uh, and other creative events. The building contains approximately 1,850 square feet of floor area. There is little opportunity to provide parking on the site and comply with the minimum landscape strips required by the landscape ordinance. Parking for a community event center is typically based on one space per 100 gross square feet of floor area. Based on the building square footage, 18 spaces would uh, typically be required. Based on a plan provided by the applicant's surveyor, seven parking spaces could be placed on the site, but the required perimeter landscape strips cannot be provided with the placement of the parking as indicated. Applicants indicated the hours of operation from 10 a.m. to possibly 11.30 p.m. with the potential for activities taking place all days of the week. The applicant indicates the use of the facility belt will be by appointment only and she or a representative will be present at all activities. Staff has concerns with regard to the parking. As stated, there's little opportunity to provide parking on site and allow for adequate land use buffers and landscape strip. The minimum landscape strip also, um, the minimum land use buffer is six feet nine inches. The minimum width of a parking stall is nine feet wide and the uh, drive 10 feet wide. There, as, as indicated, seven spaces are all that can be provided, and then you do not have the required landscape strips. Staff would, um, would want to state in the record that should the commission approve this request, the applicant will be required to seek approval from the City Beautiful Commission prior to the item being forwarded to the Board of Directors for final action. Staff is not supportive of the applicant's request. The applicant is seeking approval of a PCD zoning to allow the use of the site as an, a community event center or an event center to serve the community. The area is predominantly uh, single family with the exception of small church in the city of Little Rock's Neighborhood Resource Center, right in this immediate area. Uh, staff with the little parking being available and probably, and there's not a lot of opportunity for street parking, staff feels that this will potentially impact the neighborhood and staff recommends denial of the request. Uh, applicants here, uh, please state your name and uh, please tell us about your project. Good evening. My name is Maggie Hawkins and I have with me my granddaughter. Let me first say that I have lived in that neighborhood for 63 years. Not only have I lived in that neighborhood, but the building that the Lord placed on my heart to have not just an event center, but a community event center. It's the building that my parents owned and they operated as a cleaners for years. They too were assets to the community that I live two blocks from where the building is. This building will be a building for the community. I worked for the city of Little Rock for 18 years as a resource specialist. I worked with seniors, I worked with teenagers, I worked with those people who were underprivileged 
disadvantage and so many other adjectives that I could use. So as life changed, so do the seasons of our lives. And this is one thing that I envision in having. And this is not just for me. Some people move into communities. Let's step back just a little bit, babe. Some people move into communities and they want event centers in places where they don't live. I live there. I have a vested interest, not only in my granddaughter, but my children. And not only my children, but the schools that I have worked at also. The children's and the churches. I have gotten petitions from the neighborhood alert, not alert center, I worked there so long it stays in my mind. From the, from the Petaway Neighborhood Association, I have gotten petitions from, well, letters of support from uh, churches. There are three churches I wasn't able to get the letters of support into Donna. But everyone had been supportive of this endeavor. I understand the parking aspect. But when I worked for the city, I will never forget when we had a meeting for the veterans home on Main Street. And on East 21st Street, the city had the parking lot. We didn't have enough spaces, so guess what I said? It's okay if you go down the street and park on the 600 block. And that's what was done. I understand the part about not enough parking spaces, but I also understand how this would be a positive asset for my neighborhood. Before I came to the meeting, a lady was shot at 1905 Park Lane, a babysitter who kept two of my grandchildren. And I know our area needs some positive, positive programs. And not only do I have the facility, but I have the expertise to supply my neighborhood with what I have been working with since 1985. That's how long I've been in the community. And I am blessed to be in the community that I'm in, that I was born in, that my parents died in. So I'm asking the board to consider uh, reversing the denial. And if I have to go to the board of directors, I know a lot of them. I'd be more than happy to go. But I'm not just doing this as a community center, you know, but also as a center where we can help people. We can bring in programs for those people who suffer from a domestic abuse and various other programs. So that's basically all I have to say. This would be a generational thing, not just something for me, because it's not what you do for yourself that lasts, but it's what you do for others. So besides the parking aspect, which is what I'm saying, we parked down the 600 block when we had that homeless program. And Downtown was thoroughly against it, so I said, utilize what I have. So I'm asking you to maybe consider that, and whatever I have to do to do what I need to do, I am ready and willing to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commissioner's questions? Thank you. Thank I don't think it's so much that it's what you're doing. I think it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. To me, on the parking issue is this is an everyday thing. You could have a function there every single evening, and the neighbors are going to have to have people parking down the street for every single function, whether it be a wedding or a funeral or whatever. And that's where I'm seeing that if you only have seven parking spaces, but is that right? That's not very many for an event center. But there's a house. Anyway, there is some property not too far from where my property is that will be going up for sale soon. And I'm thinking about investing in that, and I would have no problems. Also, I was thinking when I saw this denial, I, I didn't have my glasses, so I couldn't see the denial until toward the end. <laughs> but, and um, that lets me know I need to wear my glasses. But what I was thinking is just like the alert center I had to utilize, and I understand what you're saying my parking space when they had that event. Maybe I can get with the city manager and see if we could utilize that. Their parking space, which is just one block where I worked for 18 years. See if that could happen. There are always ways to step outside of the box. And it's, I heard something said about the business, about most of the neighborhood was residential. You have a commercial lot on Rock Street. You have a commercial building on Commerce. And then you have my parents, I say my parents because it was theirs, my parents building on um, Park Lane. And then you had down the street, the Job Corps building, which is sitting there and is an eyesore in our community. You have that. So it's not all residential, but the residents have supported me in my effort. They sent the support letter, you know, that, that was that. So I don't see, I mean, I understand the parking, but I'm stepping out the box and said, what if I go and ask for permission for if I have events for them to utilize the alert center. 
because most of the time they don't have meetings at the alert center in the evening time. And maybe we could collaborate. There's always ways to step outside the box if it's possible. Uh, other commissioners? So at this point, have you had any conversations, say, with the alert center, or, or do you kind of have a parking plan in mind that you could share with us at this point? At this point, after, since I didn't bring my glasses and I read about the denial, all of a sudden it popped in my mind, okay, just like they used down the street for the homeless program when there were so many people, maybe I could get with the city manager and see if he could assist me with this endeavor that I'm about to make. Uh, that's what came to my mind. I don't know if that would be against the law or what. Would, would that be something that could be presented to staff, a revised parking strategy? I don't know. I mean, or maybe the mayor. To, to serve this type of use, the property has to be zoned the same way, and you, you can't. You put parking, I'm not sure what she's referring to as this homeless. Before the homeless center was placed on Main Street, the Downtown Neighborhood Association had a meeting at the Alert Center. They did not have enough parking space, so they used my, I had a lot at the time, right behind the Alert Center. They used that lot, and they also parked down the street at the 600 block, which was my parents' business. I had no problems with that. So that's why I said, I know you have to step outside the box. I understand the strategy, the laws, the rules and law laws, but I also know that there are also ways to step outside of the box to accommodate the neighborhood because I consider our neighborhood a village. I've been there for years. And I'm not like some contractors coming in and some people saying we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And in 10 or 20 years, you no longer see them. I plan on be at 63, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. I don't think so until the Lord is ready. I have a question since you brought up since the Lord is ready. So um, this wouldn't be able to pass to anyone else. It's just for her personally, it, since it's a PCD, correct? At this point, it, it's... Would it be able to go to in her estate or anything like that? If she It's were? not limited to Ms. Her. Hawkins' use only. She okay. hasn't done that. Do what now? It, he's saying it could pass. If you sold it. If you, if you sold it or if you went home to the Lord. <laughs> it could pass in your estate to someone else or be sold or auctioned to someone else. And these a living trust stating that if the family ever sells, then they would lose their right to the property. I mean, there's always ways. Or, or you could just, Stop. and again, I'm going to get in trouble again, or you could just amend your application to say that it's just for you only. Oh, okay. That's fine. Well, could I do that? It's, yes. Okay. To the amend it. Could I do that? I, know. I want to amend it. Um, I'm going to, you're, everyone's exactly right. This application is completely against the rules. It's black and white. There's not enough parking. But I think sometimes in an area like this where you've got someone that's deeply passionate about helping their community, I think you do need to go out of the box. So I'm going to support this application, and I'm just going to trust that you're going to make your neighbors happy, and you're not, you're going to make sure all of the people that come to your event are going to park somewhere where they're not going to upset anybody and uh, be a good neighbor. So uh, sometimes we've got to use common sense, and I'm going to try to do that. So I'm going to vote to support it with your amended application. Thank you. Commissioner Latour. I think, I think you need a pat on the back for doing what you're doing. <clears throat> Didn't we just uh, approve a, a deal at Foxcroft where everybody says at least 250 people park on the street? I, I think I, I'm all for you. I think you need a pat on the back, and I hope you work out the parking deal. But I'm going to vote for you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Do we hear a motion? I move for the approval of item, where am I at, eight? Yes. I move for the approval of item eight with all staff recommendations and comments except that of denial. I'll second. Okay. The motion has uh, been made for approval of the application except for the uh, staff recommendation of denial. Those in favor of the uh, motion, raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you. Those opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Thank Application you. passes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we'd move on to item number 10, children's home.
Item number 10, file number Z-5574-D, the United Methodist Children's Home Campus Long Form POD, located at 2002 South Fillmore Street. The Children's Home has operated since 1945 and owns approximately 27 acres at the corner of Fillmore and Charles Bussey Avenue. The Children's Home has used and continues to use the campus to fulfill Children's Home missions to provide mental, physical, uh, medical and emotional, residential and spiritual care for those in need of assistance. For 72 years, the Children's Home has utilized portions of buildings on the land area for the campus to provide various services and programs to benefit the children and the families. Uh, the current the property is currently zoned R2 single family and has a non-conforming status. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property to a POD, a planned office development, to allow them to continue operating as they have been operating in the past. The um, ap the application uh, has noted the property contains 27 acres and several buildings, which collectively cover approximately 68,650 square feet. The applicant is proposing to construct a new facility, which will cover approximately 17,747 square feet of the campus. With the new construction, an existing building will be remained and uh, will be removed, and 28 additional parking spaces will be added within the interior of the site. The new facility will consolidate pre-existing uses which are currently scattered among three buildings <coughs> on the campus. The applicant has indicated a, a list of uses that are currently being provided on the site, and uh, which are either uses that are currently being offered by the United Methodist Children's Home or ancillary uses provided by the United Methodist Children, Children's Home. The approval of the POD zoning is limited to the United Methodist Children's Home United Methodist Behavioral and the United Methodist Behavioral Health System, and the attorneys are working on some fancy language about any subsi subsidiaries that these two may result in as of potential future mergers. The applicant is requesting a deferral of the required half street improvements to the Charles Bussey Avenue, including the five foot sidewalk until the construction of a future building, which is noted on the site plan to range from 5,000 square feet to 25,150 square feet. Staff is not supportive of the deferral request. The applicant has not indicated a time frame for the construction of the street, and uh, staff feels like that the, the deferral request should be tied to a certain period of time. The applicant, um, the, 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 the plan includes a construction entrance along South Fillmore Street to allow for access to the site and a material storage area for construction activities. During construction, the existing curb along Fillmore will be removed for the temporary construction entrance. Prior to the issuance of the final certificate of occupancy, the curb must be reinstalled and construction entrance materials removed and vegetation reestablished in the construction laydown area and entrances. Uh, consideration should be given to prevent stormwater in Fillmore Street from discharging through the temporary construction entrance and damage, damaging the entrance drive. The, um, based on better clarification, the original staff recommendation was that of denial, but based on the clarification of the attended uses for the site, staff is supportive of the applicant's request for the proposed uses of the site, but staff recommends denial of the request for the, based on the request for the deferral and it not being a time-specific deferral. Thank you, staff. Do we have the applicant here, please? By the way, we only have uh, we have one card in opposition uh, from a neighbor, and uh, certainly you're welcome to uh, present your case and then and then come back for the uh, after that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I'm John Gill. I represent the Methodist Children's Home, a 118-year-old Little Rock institution. They've been around for parts of three centuries, and over that period of time, they have cared for thousands and thousands of children. Uh, it is an institution which uh, has uh, stood high in the eyes of the state and federal government who regulate this institution rather closely. And so we're pleased to have a chance to make it better by building a new psychiatric residential treatment facility, which, as the staff has said, will combine three existing buildings into a newer and more uh, uh, economically operated uh, institution for the benefit of these children. I think the 
issue really here is this business of the deferral. I could tell you an awful lot. In fact, I'd like to tell you a whole lot more about this institution and the care that it's given to children and given to mothers who have drug problems and have their children with them uh, to the uh, on-site and off-site uh, care. All of that care, incidentally, comes into the facility off of Fillmore Street, which is at the corner of uh, Fillmore and Charles Bussey. We do plan an additional entrance down on Fillmore, so the, uh, the, 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 the traffic, if you will, uh, comes and goes on Fillmore Street, not Charles Bussey. Charles Bussey is a dead-end street um, that has uh, very, very little traffic. In fact, basically the traffic is from the children's home itself. No houses face Charles Bussey. A few driveways do from those houses that adjoin it. The children's home has agreed to a lot of requests from the staff. We've agreed to donate almost three acres for floodplain, open space, easement. Uh, we have agreed to pave the sidewalk down Fillmore uh, along the edge of the property down to the uh, most southern uh, building uh, on the site. Uh, we have agreed to give away right-of-ways that have been requested to Charles Bussey as well as to Fillmore. Each of these things that we do, like sidewalks, take money from the care of children. Uh, but we've agreed to do that to enhance the neighborhood and to enhance our property, I guess, to be very candid about it. Uh, the request uh, to pave Charles Bussey right now is estimated to be in excess of a quarter of a million dollars. That's money that has to come out of children care to get it done. Uh, what we have requested is that that be deferred. We have a plan to remove and, and, and rebuild the chapel that's on the site. That chapel backs up or fronts on to Charles Bussey. And what we've requested is that, well, we actually requested a deferral because we're paving a street that's just a dead-end street. But uh, we have, instead of asking for it to be uh, uh, waived, we have asked for a deferral. And we've asked for that deferral on two conditions. One, well, first of all, let me make the observation that paving half of Charles Bussey is not going to do a very good job. That's a pretty difficult area. But nevertheless, what we have said is that we would ask that you defer us paving Charles Bussey Avenue until we get the construction, until we raise the money for the chapel and we'll have to raise a quarter of a million extra dollars to pave the street. And give us the time to do that, and then at the time that we're prepared to move forward and the city's prepared to pave the other half, because if you've looked at that street, paving half of it's not going to get you very much. It's just not going to work. So that's our request. Um, we have certainly not started a fundraising at this moment, although plans are being made by the trustees of the foundation to get that started. But if we have to, if we, if we have to pay that street at this point, that's 275 something thousand dollars. It's going to come out of child care, and right now that's a pretty heavy lick when we're trying to improve the facility and build this new structure. So I would ask that, uh, um, that you uh, grant approve our application and approve the deferral of constructing the improvements on Bussey Avenue. I'll be happy to ask you any questions later, or I'll do it right now if you have any for me. I think we'll hear from the, the resident uh, who submitted a card right now, if you don't mind. Uh, Joseph Emmel. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Um, our community is not quite sure what's going on. Uh, this um, started about, I think, maybe three and a half weeks ago uh, that we saw signs going up. And then we actually had card um, or oh, uh, envelopes sent to us telling us to get here at 4 o'clock to have any opposition. Um, now that I'm hearing uh, the closing of roads, you have the situation with Fair Park and the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Fillmore 
is definitely a runway for students. They haul butt down that road and everything. And so I ask if we could defer, let the uh, Methodist Children's Home do a little bit more com conversation with the community there. I know y'all want to get it, get it all going on, but we, we really don't know what's going on. Uh, we had the staff not supportive of it. Then we found out the staff is supportive of it today. We thought we didn't think this was going to go down and everything. So I'm just asking, can you give us a little bit more time in the community? We're definitely not for this. They are talking about building a sidewalk that's been needed to be done for a long time in that area, and that might be a positive that can get them to pass this. But let them uh, communicate with us a little bit uh, longer so we make sure we're all happy with this and everything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Emmel. Um, commissioners, any questions, comments? I have a question. Is um, a five-year deferral, is that, um, I mean, are you able to do it within that time frame? Raise your money and? It's hard to say how long it takes to raise money. Um, that's one question. My other question would be, have you talked with the neighborhood? Have you had any neighborhood meetings? Yes, I did want to mention that. We've had a neighborhood meeting, at, at least one that I know of, perhaps uh, more, three. We've had three neighborhood meetings. And I have here a letter that's addressed to you all, to the Planning Commission, and it's from the University District Neighborhoods Association. And I'll read part of it, I'll leave it all of it, but the basic of it says, the University District Neighborhoods Association member neighborhoods, Broadmoor, Fair Park, Midtown, Point of Woods, South of Asher, University Park, University West, and War Memorial all endorse Methodist Children's Home Development. It is the type of investment in our area that the neighborhood believes is for the best interest of the community, and they ask that you give full, and I would say unanimous approval. So. Uh, I'll be happy with approval, <laughs> but uh, we've we've tried to keep the neighborhood informed. Obviously, everybody doesn't show up, and there'll be people that won't know about it. But in three meetings and with this kind of response, I think we've done what you would want us to do, to talk to the neighbors and let them know what we're doing. And uh, it, it, it with, if nothing else, paving the sidewalk down the runway he was talking about on on uh, Fillmore will be a, a, a great help. You won't have people out in that runway that'll be on the sidewalk. So we're prepared to move forward with this. I will tell you, to answer your question as best I can, that the, uh, the Board of Trustees of the Foundation is now looking at how you get started with developing uh, this, the, the rest of the campus and particularly uh, the chapel. And I don't want to say this too publicly, but it's a lot easier to raise money for a church than it is for some other things. So I am optimistic. This, this uh, Methodist Children's Home for 118 years has been strongly supported by the Methodist Church and the members of the Methodist Church. So I have no reason to believe that once this campaign starts that there won't be, uh, it, it won't be successful. Uh, so I... I wish I could just say, yes, ma'am, in five years you'll be able to come to the dedication, but I promise you, you will be whenever we get it done. Any other questions? Other commissioners? Commissioner Leahy. Mr. Gill, did I hear you say that you're going to improve both sides of the street, or were you going to improve one? One side, the side on the west side of Fillmore, adjacent to the property. Could you do both sides? Uh, well, that would be an unusual request, Mr. Lay. They, they, we don't, I haven't seen that before where you had to put sidewalks on both sides of the street, but um, this is a big project, and the money is not just flowing. So I would say it would be a, a pretty difficult to commit to that. Other commissioners? Commissioner Latour. Just to help my confusion, the... the, the the recommendation, the staff recommendation is to approve it with, with the deferral, and the deferral is apparently indefinite or until they start. No, um, I think Mike can probably address the street construction, but staff's recommendation is that the deferral be a time-specific deferral, two years, five years. I mean, typically, five, a five-year deferral is 
the maximum that the city grants, but at the end of the five years, if they don't have the money, then they could come back and request some additional time yeah. based on need. While we're on the subject, if, if, if Mike Hood, you want to come up and clarify that, I have to agree. My understanding and my, my experience is uh, we entertain deferrals, but they have to be specified in writing per time certain, uh, and beyond five years is, is you know, within five years is reasonable. Sure. Um, as you know, uh, this comes up often, and it's especially difficult with a with a nonprofit institute, one that does such fine work, and and I can attest to that being a Methodist myself that uh, regularly contribute to this cause, and he's got his dates exactly right. It goes back to 1899, but uh, you know we we deal with these difficult issues often, and just not long ago we saw a deferral uh, uh, a waiver request on another institute we had to act on. Vince reminded me of some that come through in the last few Camp Aldersgate's been dealt with in the same way. Uh, Park over on Geyer Springs, Southwest Christian, Medina Institute. So they all face kind of the same thing, and it's a difficult thing building boundary streets. It really is. We're reluctant as staff to recommend a nonspecific deferral to the last phase of a site plan. And really, this builds out their campus about as far as it can go. Uh, this last chapel phase. We'd feel better if there was time specific or if some work was done now with this very major construction and just some acknowledgement that they have an obligation here that has to be dealt with in some manner. Um, otherwise, certainly we, we've come a long way since the beginning. They understand that there is sidewalks and everybody does have to do some work on their boundary street. And Fillmore's not a dead end, Mr. Gill. I'm sorry, it goes down and turns to the right, goes to 19th. So uh, it's just very narrow. Uh, the Methodist Children's Home never did dedicate their right of way. So as all there is is the right of way that was dedicated with the plat to the other side. And so it's a very narrow street and it really does need some work especially around an institute like this. Thank you, Mr. Hood. Commissioners, any questions, comments? I move for the approval of item 10. With well, before we do that, there, there is the item, if the applicant wants to amend to specify, or do you want to, let me ask that. For, for a, a request for deferral of a boundary street improvement, is that a separate vote or is that part of the, it'd be two votes, okay. So that's good to know. Two votes, mm -hmm. okay. So you know what, the first vote would be for approval application with its uses. And the and, site, and, and site plan. But that, do you, but also, excuse me, did you submit a card? No. What, excuse me. He's with the children's home. Oh. I was under the impression that if we increased a certain time period, we were locked into that. But if you need five, if you give us five years to try to do a capital campaign, if we can't, if we if we need six, we'll come back and tell you where we are because we do have a plan to do a capital campaign. Yes, it, it would be good to have that agreement up front. That's the uh, president of the Methodist Children's oh, Home, sorry. Andy Alton, okay. that was speaking. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think you were derelict. <laughs> uh, he has said that uh, the five years will be acceptable. Uh, bear in mind that when we asked for the deferral, we said, give us time to raise the money, and the city pays the other half of the street. And I don't think Mike's going to argue with the other fact that that street's got to be paved, too. But that's what we were trying to do so that we get a complete uh, improvement. So the five years is uh, acceptable. Okay, I'm still making two motions. Yeah, so what? Uh, let me summarize what I'm hearing before uh, Commissioner Bubbis makes these two different motions is uh, – Applicate, the applicant has agreed to put in writing a, a time certain of a, a five-year deferral for the street improvements. And staff? Vince wants to make sure that the sidewalk along Fillmore is not a part of the deferral. Yes, and I want to clarify, that's only for the busy. The deferral, deferral is only for the busy. That's exactly right. We okay. should do the sidewalk almost right. from the get-go. Yeah, I, that's what I thought, too. I just want to be sure we got that. Commissioner Latour? want to be sure now you said you wanted a deferral of five years 
or until and or until the city pays the other half. And I think what we're saying on a staff no, level is it, five years. It's their deferral. You can't tie the other half into this application at all. I just want to be sure I'm here and I want to. That is correct. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Latour. Okay. We will have two different motions, one on the, uh, uh, the use and the site plan, and the second one will be on the five-year deferral. All right. We'll give it a shot here. Uh, I move for approval of item 10 um, as amended with its uses and the site plan. All With staff. all staff recommendations and comments. Okay. Thanks. Second. Okay, we have a motion uh, to approve the site plan application, and it's been seconded. All those uh, approved signify by raising their right hand. Those opposed? Unanimous. Okay, a second motion. Okay. I move for the approval of the deferment of the five-year requirement, is that the right language, uh, for item number 10? For the Charles Bussey uh, uh, required improvement, that's correct. Thank you. Only. Appreciate that. Okay. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the request to defer improvements on Charles Bussey, and has been seconded. Those uh, approve that motion, raise your right hand, please. Those opposed? Unanimous. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, uh, the Children's Home and the Neighborhood Association appreciate the unanimous vote, and we'll do the best to make you proud of what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, right. Item number 17, Appian Way, JNR Properties. Item number 17, file number Z 7895 D, JR Properties Revised Short Form PCD, located at 716 Appian Way. Ordinance number 2769, adopted by the Board of Directors on August 27, 2013, allowed a revocation of a PCD zoning, which was approved in September 2007, and also allowed the rezoning of this property to a PCD to allow for the de development of the site with a new warehouse building. It was proposed to be constructed and attached to an existing single family home which was located on the property and the single family home was going to be converted into office space. The floor level of the warehouse was to match the basement level of the existing dwelling. The warehouse uh, was proposed 60 by 100 and um, there was an, an additional home which was proposed to be removed, which the applicant did not remove. It, it continues to occupy on the site. Uh, the new warehouse has been constructed and the house has been converted into the office, office use. The applicant is now requesting to amend the previously approved PCD to allow portions of the site to be used as outdoor storage of materials. The items are currently stored on the site, which include firewood, used brick, rock, uh, pipe, and form lumber to be used in their construction business and some items will be used on site. The bricks are stored on pallets and in piles within the, an area that is currently graveled. The applicant states they do not sell any materials. Materials are used in their construction business. The applicant indicates a 10-foot high wood fence is proposed along Appian Way on the western side of the development. The applicant proposes the placement of a 12-foot fence along the I-630 frontage to allow screening to the adjacent raised elevation free, elevated freeway. The fence is proposed is 100% opaque. Landscaping is proposed for screening where necessary. There are no other changes proposed from the originally approved PCD. Staff is not supportive of the applicant's request. The applicant is seeking approval to allow outdoor storage and materials on the site, which was originally approved with no outdoor activities. This site is indicated on the future land use plan as MOC, Mixed Office Commercial, within the area across Appian Way as STD Service Trades District. Uh, the, these land use categories are intended as office and commercial along with warehousing activities. The STD is intended for activities within an industrial park setting which primarily serve other office services or industrial businesses. There are other businesses located within this area which are office warehouse type businesses, none of which have areas of outdoor storage and materials or merchandise. The site is the western edge of the industrial park activities with the Capitol View Stiff Station neighborhood just one block north and west of the site. Staff feels the request to allow the placement of the outdoor items as proposed by the applicant is inappropriate for the site and staff recommends denial. Okay. We uh, 
I have one card in opposition. Uh, the applicant is here. Uh, the applicant. Okay, okay, please state your name. Joseph Holland, the applicant, uh, or the representative for the property owners. Okay. Uh, feel free to make your case, and also we'll, when we call on the uh, uh, person in opposition, you might want to reserve some of your time just to speak to whatever they're saying, too. Yeah, you can, you can look at the, the map of the property. We actually own most of the property between 7th Woodrow and Appian Way and I-630. The... The shaded area is the warehouse area with the two residential houses. We were asked to leave the residential house to address that concern by the neighborhood association. They thought it was better to have that house in front of there and not be looking at the warehouse. Um, we weren't aware that we could not store pro uh, materials on the on the site, and we also had a quite a few bricks on Woodrow Street. We were planning on using along Woodrow Street to develop that into a commercial light office space area and we have not received any any um, anybody that wanted to to actually move out for us to build at this time so we we're waiting for somebody to actually express some interest in before we build that building and that was originally most of the materials were for um, we have a lot of used brick, which are hard to come by, and that's what we're storing on the site. We also use them on our restaurants we build in some of the houses. We use some on the property here, and we have property in or other rental property in uh, the Hillcrest area, and we've used them on. So that's what we're asking to store, and we weren't aware that we couldn't store there. So now we're asking if we can build a fence to, to screen it. It's, um, I have a one card, uh, Kayward Jolly, wishes to speak, please. Hello, everybody. My name is I'm Kayward Jolly, and I own the property across the street, 719 Appian Way. Um, it's an eyesore. I mean, I could use different words, but I'm not going to use that. I mean, it's totally an eyesore. And I... I guess you guys have been by there and actually looked at the property. From 630 Exit Way, looks awful. From Appian Way, totally awful. They came in, you gave them a permit or whatever you call it to build office warehouse space. It didn't say anything about outdoor storage. And you can't use, I wasn't aware, because simple fact is, if the speed limit is 65 and you're doing 85 and the trooper pulls you over and say you were speeding, you know how fast you was going, you said, no, well, you were doing 85. We're going to give you a ticket. Well, I didn't know it was 85. I thought it was 65. That is no excuse for it. You're still going to get a ticket. So I don't understand how you can give somebody a permit to do something and they totally do something totally different. If they were supposed to tear down their houses and use one house for office space, then it's what it should have been used for. I mean, because if I come in here to get a permit to build a two-story house and I end up building a four-story house, it's going to be problems. And that's what the gist of it is about. I mean, it's totally off. Now, if I have pictures in my truck. I can run and get them if y'all need them. Okay. I'll say some of my time for later. Thank you, Mr. Jolly. Uh, applicant, would you like to... Say some additional comments. Yeah, the only thing I guess I could add is that we were asked to leave the other residential property there by the Neighborhood Association, the Stiff Station Capital View Association. Um, they requested that. We were going to tear it down and put park in there, but they wanted to leave it there, so we did that. But that's why we're, we're requesting to build a fence to screen the materials so it won't be an eyesore. So. Thank you. Commissioner's questions? Ready for motion? Oh. Yeah, I do, I do have a question. I guess just for clarification, and, and, and to the gentleman that described the eyesore, mm -hmm. the eyesore that's there, and it's probably more from the uh, opposition. What is it? I mean, are, are items being stored there now? Is it? The, and, and the second question being, uh, would a fence, in your opinion, uh, help the concern that you have? Oh, you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um. The thing about it is, 
they've been storing bricks, firewood. You have front end loader, heavy equipment, trailers. Um, you have landscaping items there. Um, it says for the office warehouse, but apparently it's been used for a storage for a lawn care company has been storing this stuff in there one time. So it's a business. Sure. So they actually got personal gain. So uh, by the definition of fraud, I mean, you come in representing or presenting it this way, in actuality is coming through the back door is something totally different where you are gaining financially. So, so the question, though, I get that, I understand that. So the question I'm asking, though, it, it appears that the applicant is now at this point wanting to write that, if you will, and correct that by uh, putting up a fence to, uh, I guess, shield the, the, the view so that you don't see this. And my question to you is that, is that something that, in your opinion, would, would be beneficial? Would that help? No, it would not help, in my opinion. No, okay. it would not help. I mean, it's still there. Yeah. Trucks are still coming in and out. Okay. I mean, it's big trucks there. I mean, if you've driven by and saw it, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Other commissioners? Okay. I move for the approval of item number 17 with all staff recommendations and comments except that of denial. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the application. Uh, those uh, approve the motion, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Okay. Okay. Application Item number 22. Hey, Craig, can I ask you questions that's not the last one? Item number 22, file number Z-9207, Lawson Road West, short form PDC. Look, she's gone. She left. Mm -hmm. Located at 5000 Hope Lane, the request is a rezoning of the site from R2 single family to PC, PDC planned development commercial to allow the use of the existing pole barn and a small metal building as office space for a contractor's office and equipment storage. The site is served by a 20 foot ingress and egress easement to access Lawson Road. The pole barn will be used for light construction equipment storage. The small metal building will increase in size to 1,000 square feet and be used as office for the construction company. The request includes the allowance of access drive to remain as gravel surface. A septic tank will be placed on the site for sanitary sewer. Staff is not supportive of the applicant's request. The applicant is seeking approval of a rezoning to a commercial use for the site, which does not have an established history of commercial uses. Although there are commercial uses located adjacent to the site, there are also single-family homes located to the east and north of the site. With regard to non-conforming uses, the zoning ordinance states non-conformities may continue, but the provisions of the ordinance are designed to curtail enlargement or expansion of such non-conformities encourage their eventual elimination in order to preserve the integrity of the zoning district. The, um, the property is zoned R2 single-family, and the property does not have an established history of commercial uses, so staff does not feel the requested rezoning is appropriate for this site, and staff recommends denial. Is the applicant here? Please come up and state your name and uh, make your case. I'm the owner of the property, Doug Woodall. I think there is a misunderstanding about the history of the uh, building, the property. It was part of the original Little Rock Electric business. Um, there were about 4.5 acres originally, and I now own 3.22 acres. Uh, the, the balance of the property went before the commission and in December uh, acquired the PDC, and that's what we're trying to do. It does have a history of commercial use. Uh, there's no residential buildings on the property. There's a pole barn. Uh, we've used it for storage since we've bought it, and um, it, it, if it is possible to pass that around to just show you the subject mm -hmm. property. And uh, I don't think there's been any neighborhood opposition to the east of us. Uh, it's um, going commercial. E everyone who tries to sell has a commercial realtor there near the new dollar, dollar store. 
Uh, to the west of the property, you can see it's already commercial and has been for a number of years. I don't know if the zoning is commercial, but that is the usage. Mm -hmm. The only change we're making is there's a, a metal building that we're adding 12 feet to, uh, 12 by 40, so about 500 square feet is all we're asking to add to the property. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, have any questions to the applicant or of staff? Okay, come on. You will need to complete a card, though, and get it to me. I'm Barbara Holmes, and I happen to own land west of this property. The land in between has been grandfathered in. It's commercial. Electrical company, there's a car lot thing back there. They work on cars. And you say there's a lot of people living out there. I don't know if y'all have driven out that way lately. It's mostly car lots. Everything going that way is commercial. And I hope you approve this man's request because our land, we would like for it to be commercial. We've had several people look at it. We're trying to sell it. We can't sell it. Nobody wants to put a house out there with car lots half mile down the road. So it needs to be changed. That's about all I got to say. Okay, thank you. Please file the car when you get a chance. Thank you. Commissioners? No questions? Entertain a motion. I move for approval of item number 22 with all staff recommendations and comments except that of denial. Okay. Do we hear a second? We have a motion and a second to approve the application. Those approve of the motion, raise your right hand, please. Those who do not approve the motion. I always vote with staff. <laughs> Where does that get me? <laughs> Motion passes. Okay, you bet. 23. This is the item on Kavanaugh. Is the applicant here for that, please? He is. Okay. Uh, we'll get you up here in just a second, Mr. Graham. <laughs> Uh, item number 23, file number Z-9208, Graham Property Management, short form PDR, located at 1417 Cavanaugh Boulevard. The request is a rezoning of the site from R3 single family to PDR, plan development res residential to recognize an existing fourplex and a duplex located on the property. The, um, the property is not a non-conforming st uh, structure, but the property has been um, a fourplex for a number of years. The zoning ordinance states in the event that any structure that is uh, devoted in whole or part to a non-conforming use is destroyed by fire, explosion, or other casualty or public enemy to the extent more than 50% of the current replacement value immediately prior to such damage, uh, such structure shall not be restored unless such structure and use thereof shall thereafter conform to all the regulations of the zoning district in which the structure and uses are located. As stated, the uh, property is currently zoned R3, uh, so the applicant is requesting to rezone it to a PDR to recognize the number of uses and all the uses that are there. The Although the building is not a non-conforming structure and was converted to a fourplex several years ago, the review process for the item with, as is as within the non-conforming review section of the ordinance. The fourplex was recently burned beyond 50% as determined by the fire marshal and is proposed for reconstruction. There are no modifications proposed for the duplex or the building envelope, envelope of the fourplex. The site is located within the Hillcrest Design Overlay District. The overlay allows on-street parking to be credited to, towards parking requirements at a rate of one space per 10 linear feet of street frontage. The property has 75 feet of frontage, which would allow them credit for seven parking spaces on the street. 
four vehicle parking spaces could be located within the rear yard area and still provide the proper landscaping. Uh, the site would be required nine parking spaces based on the typical parking requirement of one and a half spaces per unit. The applicant uh, has not indicated paving or of the parking or landscaping. The development is multifamily, which would typically require the placement of a hard surface parking area and the placement of landscaping between the paved areas and the property line. Staff recommends the applicant provide paving within the rear yard area to meet the typical development standards of the various city ordinances. Staff recommends the parking include a perimeter landscape strip as required by ordinance of six feet nine inches. Staff is supportive of the applicant's request. The applicant is seeking approval to rebuild the structure which previously contained four units. The uh, property is indicated as residential high on the uh, city's future land use plan. The density proposed by the applicant complies with the land use plan. Staff feels a rezoning to allow the continued use of the property as multifamily is appropriate. Staff recommends approval of the request subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends the applicant provide a proper paved and landscape parking area within the rear yard area of the site. Okay, now we have the applicant, Mr. Graham, come forth and. Um, uh, Commissioners, I'm John Graham. I agree with your staff. Okay, and you did you did agree with paving the uh, the back for parking and uh, perimeter landscaping. Um, I don't disagree with it. Um, well, you need to be specific. Uh, if that's what they're recommend, I, we haven't had an opportunity to discuss it exactly what they want. I think what they're talking about now, uh, when she was clarifying it, is the rear parking. And it sounds like I would need uh, space to accommodate two parking spots, which I don't see that as being a problem. I think the landscaping is something that we try to do anyway just because we want it to be aesthetically pleasing to people. So, um, I mean, it's within our benefit. So you agree to amend your application, is it for two or four spots? That's for four. He's uh, only two. required two, but he could potentially get four in the, in the rear yard. And we would recommend that he provide as many in the rear yard as he can because based on the pressure of Kavanaugh and street parking it within this area. Okay. So you really I would, I, right now, without, I wouldn't want to be cost prohib prohibitive. And without looking at what it would be to go double what the requirement is, I mean, that kind of concerns me. I'd like, you know, to be able to do that analysis. I mean, that's new at this right moment that I just heard about that, so. Is, uh, is staff approval contingent upon him agreeing at this stage to the parking? Who's all that's required okay. to me, all right. uh, but it's got to be brought up to proper standards. That includes perimeter landscaping, properly paved, because he's got those seven spaces on on Kavanaugh. Okay, so you agree to that? For the yes, perimeter? sir. And I think I I think we would probably want to go in excess of two if we could, you okay. know. But without knowing the, the the cost and the dimensions of it and how much what they actually can, could do back there, I, I can't commit to more. I just want to clarify that there is another card that you might want to wait, Miss Pat Glass. Oh, absolutely. As, as, yes, I'm just sorry. Yes. Say something and you can come back up yeah. after that. Uh, yes, my name is Pat Glass. I live next door to that property, that, the house that burned. I live on Louise Street, 406 Louise Street. And my side yard is um, separated from the back of that property on Kavanaugh by a board fence, which I have maintained and I've lived there for 18 years. Um, I'm, I'm real interested to see how he's gonna get four parking spaces back there because I don't see where there could, could be two. There is a, a little building back there that has two apartments in it that goes with his other big house, the one that burned. And, um, there's not much space between the board fence and, and his little two uh, apartment building. Uh, the easement is, uh, what, six feet, I think. Anyway, um, my concern is uh, if he adds more apartments in that house that burned when he remodels it and they've already started 
tearing out stuff to get ready to remodel. Uh, where are all these people going to park? There's already a big house right next to his property that he manages that has nine apartments in it. It's managed by Lashley um, Property Management. They, there is, um, it looks like the circus just left town over there sometimes because the garbage and the trash is all over the yard. Uh, Mr. Lashley could not get his renters to roll the garbage dumpsters out on the street on Tuesdays to, so the city could pick up the garbage and the recyclables. So he got rid of all those and he brought in two permanent garbage dumpsters put them in the backyard, they're up against the fence that I maintain back there too, and that's not the problem. But the problem is the renters will not, they don't always get their garbage in the dumpster. They throw it at the dumpster and sometimes it comes over the dumpster and into my driveway and I get rid of it for them. But, and I've, I've called Mr. Lashley, I know this is off the subject of his property, but just to give you an idea, of some more problems that this is going to create. Uh, we already have enough problems there. There's a uh, narrow driveway between his property at 1417 Kavanaugh and Mr. Lashley's big house with nine apartments at 1425 Kavanaugh. And that's the only thing that separates those two big ha two houses. Um, so if there are more apartments built in his place, um, then that's more cars that have to be parked someplace. There's more garbage. I don't know whether he's planning on bringing in another garbage dumpster or not. We already have problems with the two that's back there. Um, and I live right in, behind all that mess, so um, I'm just trying to find out basically what's going on. I want to voice my opinion against this. Uh, the four apartments he has in that house that burned is there illegally. He did not get permission to, um, I don't know if he was managing the property at the time, that was, it was years ago, but there, uh, he's asking for uh, four apartments to be built in that building and that wasn't the original zoning. Um, and, um, and then there are the two in the little duplex in the backyard um, so my concern is the parking issue they'll have to park on Kavanaugh and it's already crowded um, the the getting rid of the garbage uh, if his if the if the gentleman on at 1425 Kavanaugh cannot get his renters to put their garbage in the roll-out dumpsters and put them on the curb on Tuesday and and get that picked up, then I don't know how this gentleman's going to get his done either. Uh, the, the gentleman at uh, 1425 Kavanaugh, Mr. Lashley, has to hire somebody to come empty those dumpsters. And I, call, have, I had to call him last summer when it got hot because it was smelling bad. I've called him uh, last week, a week ago, and asked him to get the dumpsters emptied. They're not empty yet. It's gotten worse in the last week with trash uh, thrown down by the dumpsters. Um, so it's there's already a big problem there, and this, I fear, will just create more problems due to the nature of people who rent those kinds of little apartments. And, and I, you know, I have nothing against that. I mean, I grew up in poverty situations myself, um, and everybody has to live someplace. And I, but if I don't know how you get people to put their garbage in the dumpster, but I'm I'm getting a little tired of living next door to all this this uh, chaos over there, and um, I would like to request that you not give him permission to add any more apartments in that house because we already have nine in the big house right next to it. We have parking problems. We have problems getting rid of the garbage. The city truck that picks up garbage cannot go behind those houses and pick it up. 
uh, there's not enough room back there, and they can't even turn around back there. So um, you would have to hire somebody every two weeks or whenever it's supposed to be picked up to go back there and empty the, the dumpsters and haul it off. And that's what Mr. Lashley has been doing at 1425 until this year. And um, it's been over a week since I called him. He hasn't responded. And he, he, it, the trash and garbage is still over there. Um, so that's, uh, that's why I'm here. And um, if those four apartments in this house at 1417 Cavanaugh was added illegally a few years ago. I don't think this man deserves to get four more uh, apartments, but that's just my personal opinion. But uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you, Ms. Glass, for your comments. Uh, Mr. Graham? Would you like to come up and uh, address those? And while you're doing that, I, I do want to ask staff, the, the application is, is for a fourplex, is that right? Or how many units? Commissioner Barry, for four units. That's four units what's only. That's been in there for... I want to clarify that, no, no more. 30 years. Okay. Plus the two in the back. Plus the two in the back, okay. The four been in there? When do we think? We think about 30 years yeah. on the research I did that said it, they were there illegally so that's where I got my information uh, it may have come from Planning Commission uh, one of my neighbors who's not here I'm the only neighbor here I guess but some other neighbors I've talked to who live just across the street from me on Louise Street they do not want the additions and because it will create more problems and uh, so. Okay, that answers it for me. We have a, a, a we have a lot that has six units on it, four in the main building, two in the back. It was non-conforming, and, and this is a re request to formalize that uh, recognition. Is that correct? It, it it's not non-conforming. It is okay because at some point it was converted to these four units. All right. The zoning was not changed. Gotcha. It, so, but it has a long history. Oh, sure. of being used for four units. Okay. Let's keep the uh, comments on to uh, 1417 Cavanaugh uh, rather than the other property. Mr. Graham, do you have anything else you would want to add? Uh, As, no, I, I'll make sure Mr. Glass uh, gets my telephone number. I know most of the neighbors. I think one of the different... Please, th please use the microphone. Yes, please. I think, I, I think one of the uh, differences, um, apparent to me anyway, is we own the property and manage it. Um, we're just not some fly-by-night property management. I worked for Altel for 35 years, retired about eight years ago. Um, it's my family that, that does it. We've owned the property for approximately six, seven years. Um, it was bought as a four, it bought as an existing fourplex, duplex, the way it is now. Um, the fire damage was, uh, didn't look like a lot of fire damage. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Um, but because of the water, the smoke, and everything else, we were doing work in over 50%, so we defaulted to that statute. Okay. And that's why we're in the predicament we're in now. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any questions, comments? Entertain a motion? I don't even know how to address this one. I'll just make a motion, I guess. Somebody else? Okay. Um, and staff is for this one. Correct. Okay. I move for uh, approval of item 23 with all staff recommendations and comments. Second. We have a motion to approve the application with staff recommendations. Those uh, approve that motion, uh, raise your right hand. Those opposed? I'm with you, Troy. Okay. <laughs> so nine to two. Application motion passes. Eight to two. Eight to two, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Move on to the next item. Item number 26. This is the Northfield property, senior housing. Item number 26, file number Z-9211, the crest at Chanel Longform PDR, located on the west side of Chanel Parkway, approximately a quarter mile south of Northfield Drive. The request is a rezone 10 acres located on the west side of Chanel Parkway. Uh, from R2 single family to PDR, planned development residential to allow the development of the site with an age-restricted adult senior living facility with two buildings joined by a courtyard area. The facility is proposed with three stories of living units along with a below-grade parking deck on the northwest corner of the site. Maximum building height proposed is 45 feet from grade. The facility will contain 221 units uh, with 81 units of active adults who will still work and drive on a regular but not daily basis along with 140 units of less active adults that may be retired and not traveling each day. The plan includes the placement of one and two bedroom units within the independent senior living section of the development. The plan indicates one, two, and three bedroom units with an active, uh, within the active senior living section of the development, 107 units of one bedroom and 33 units of two bedrooms within the independent se senior living section. Uh, each of the buildings will have garden areas for the residents within the interior courtyards. The plan indicates the placement of a fenced dog park along the western perimeter of the site. The plan also includes the placement of walking trails within the landscaped area of the site. Areas will be set aside for passive and outdoor activities. The plan indicates pavilions and picnic areas will be included within the landscaped areas. Indoor pool, spa, fitness center will be located in the basement area below the common area building. Additional amenities include full-service restaurant, transportation, uh, and medical uh, to shopping, medical appointments, and errands. Parking for multifamily developments is based on one and a half spaces per unit. 221 total units would typically require the placement of 331 spaces to serve the development. The parking is indicated as more than adequate to serve. The applicant has, has made an agreement with the adjacent neighborhoods uh, regarding the placement of perimeter fencing and gating, which I think the applicant will provide to you. That has not been provided to staff as a formal amendment to their application. Staff has concerns with the development plan as proposed. The applicant is requesting the rezoning of the site to allow the development of the site with an age-restricted community with an overall density of 22 units per acre. The site is indicated on the future land use plan as, uh, single, as residential low or single family. Although there are commercial and office zonings and land uses within the general area, staff feels a transition is occurring with the suburban office and open space land uses to the east of the site. Staff feels a development plan with a density as proposed is not appropriate and staff recommends denial. Okay. As the applicant here, we just have one card in opposition. Well, uh, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for serving as commissioner, serving our city as commissioners. I'm Larry Crane Jr. I um, along with my family and Jace Jones, our partner, own the uh, property that we're asking you to approve the redevelopment for tonight. Uh, Joe White is our civil engineer. I think you might be familiar with him. Might have met him a time or two. And uh, we're just glad to, I always get excited about these projects, so I'm gonna try to keep this to, to a minimum. Um, 60, in, each day 10,000 Americans turn 65. And so we have what we call the silver tsunami. Uh, or what's being called the silver tsunami, and housing needs are changing dramatically. So what we have in the last uh, couple of years been studying ways to meet the needs of residents in, in Little Rock with housing that is uh, for fi designated for 55 plus only uh, residents. We have, you, some of you remember, were, uh, got a, an addition, a development approved called Chanel Village that we're currently constructing that's 188 units of uh, single family attached homes for lease in the Chanel Valley uh, development. And uh, this property that we're bringing to you tonight is a, also within the Chanel Valley development, it is a 10 acre site that Arkansas uh, Presbyterian Church uh, originally purchased to build a church on. And uh, we purchased that property earlier this year. Um, we have a plan, and I think we've got slides that we handed out tonight to build, as Donna said, 221 units of um, senior 55 plus age restricted senior living. Uh, the plan includes a, as Donna pointed out, 
a, um, extensive amenities that are uh, valuable and wanted, desired by uh, people that are independent living, active adults, and uh, that really is broken down into two different phases or two different uh, uh, components. One is active adult living, which would be for seniors who are still driving every day, who are, uh, some of them may work part-time or even could potentially work full-time. And then independent living, which is more for people who are uh, maybe single and over 55, typically m more in the age of 80. Um, so that this, these two components work together in a way to allow uh, community to be developed that, uh, that not only meets the um, housing needs of these community members, but also the social interaction needs. It, it is completely an unlicensed facility, so it's only independent living. However, we will provide um, access to uh, three meals a day that will be available uh, at the option of the residents. Uh, so that they can, if they need to or want to, can stay on property without having to prepare their own meals. Um, all of the units would be completely um, occupied by one family or one family member or one, you know, one person or one family, typically a couple or an, a single individual. We think that in the 220 units, our total census would be something in the 250 uh, residents' ca uh, capacity. Um, as you can see, the, um, we have employed a, a very talented architectural group out of Orlando that have, that have created this plan for us, and uh, we think it, it provides very attractive um, exterior elevations as well as interior uh, amenities. Um, so w we um, met, with, uh, met, met with Deltic early on in the process, and I asked uh, them to comment on what, what we should do about this development since it was inside their uh, since it was inside their original master development. And <clears throat> they basically told me that they thought three things. Number one, that they uh, thought it was a good development, looked like a, a good project to them. Um, they also said that, the, um, that they really would have trouble um, saying that they were not for senior housing because they are actively searching for uh, developments for senior housing, and then thirdly, they ask us that we, you know, recommended that we meet with the neighbors and that we get the approval of the neighbors uh, to before we uh, try to move forward on this. So we have done that. We have worked with the neighbors. We started immediately uh, upon uh, receiving the plan, meeting with the neighbors. Our first contact with was with Miss Padilla, who is our, is present here tonight. Um, she uh, represents the broader POA that is the neighborhood that surrounds this property, and we asked them for their input all along the way. We asked um, what we could do to make this project more appealing to them, and uh, we've made those changes, which I thought we had, Donna uh, had made a formal and asked for an amendment, which essentially... Um, if, if we are asking for that, if, if we haven't done that appropriately already, uh, essentially it reduces the parking about, by about 24 parking spots, uh, all of which would have faced the neighborhoods, the parking lot or the car lights, headlights of, the neighbor, of these parking spots all faced the neighborhood. So we removed all those. We uh, increased the, um, act, uh, the buffer, our na the area that we are going to leave natural, not only for partially undisturbed, but any part that is disturbed would be put back in um, very extensive landscaping. Uh, we've met with the, the, the neighbors, and they basically ask us to amend the, the plan with three different facets. The first thing they, would, they ask us to do is take those parking spots out, which we've done. They ask us to increase the buffer area dramatically. We've, we've done that, and it's not shown on this plan, but we do have, um, earlier we gave you a revised site plan uh, that, that shows those. Um, I can prepare to hand those out if we need to. And then we also, um, okay, so this is the revised plan. You can see over here on what I call the north side, but it's really the west, north, northwest corner of the property. It, it um, we reduced the all the part. We removed all the parking that faced the neighborhood. So any parking, any parking spot that would have 
caused the headlights to be pointed into the neighborhood. We removed those. We have left more undisturbed area. We have about a 150 feet of undisturbed area between our building and, or I'm sorry, we have about 100 feet of undisturbed area between our parking lot and our uh, the, the neighbor's property lines. And um, what, what was the last thing that we agreed to do? The gate, we, oh yeah, so we have, we had already, before we had met with the neighbors, we had a meeting a, couple, a week ago tonight, and we had about 40 neighbors that were present. And uh, before we had done that, we had already met with Bemis Tree Farm and come up with a plan to add 100 evergreen trees that are actually 12 feet tall and 5 feet wide. And they have a, a way of, of designing the, the planting of those trees such that we'll put them in a diagonal pattern so that pretty much anywhere you're standing on the property line, you won't be able to see through. Uh, there's a lot of natural veg vegetation that we're leaving, big, huge oak trees and in particular that are going to be left on the perimeter of the property. But we believed, we knew that in the wintertime when the leaves are off the trees, the, these evergreens would create that kind of um, uh, screening, natural screening from, the, from our property to our neighbor's property. You do, we did hand out a letter uh, from Ms. Padilla who represents the neighborhood stating that Generally, with not unequivocally, but generally, the neighbors are very supportive of this. Um, we've discussed um, all the, the, we believe all the things that might be a concern for them, and we, I think, have resolved all those issues. So I'd just like to reserve any time that we might have to, to answer any questions. And if Ms. Padilla wants to speak, I don't think she turned in a card, but... Thank you, Mr. Crane. Why don't we hear from Jack Critcher? He submitted a card. Okay. And then uh, we'll see. Well, those are my reading glasses. I, I didn't make the mistake of leaving my reading glasses tonight. I brought them. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair and, and uh, commissioners. Um, I was a little surprised that his comment uh, that Ms. Padilla, and maybe I misinterpreted it, but uh, it, it almost sounded like there was a consensus among the property owners over there in, in the Duquesne area, and, and I don't know who all Miss Padilla's talked to, but I, I can assure you it's, the, although I'm the only one who showed up, there are several homeowners in that neighborhood who, uh, who oppose this, uh, this project. And uh, my concerns, number one, <clears throat> the concentration of 221 units on 10 acres, um, it, it, I think the staff mentioned that was 22 units per acre, 22 per acre. My little home, 2,000 square feet, is on a third of an acre. It takes me about 30 minutes to cut the grass with my 20-inch push mower. And in order to have that type of density, I would have to put another seven homes in my yard. I mean, the, the density is just, you know, it's really a concern to me. Um, I think there are 200, and, uh, I think there are 189 single family units in Duquesne where I live, and I've lived there uh, uh, going on five years now, almost five years. Uh, another concern is that, um, you know, the project's three stories tall, uh, and the fact that it's, you know, it's size, uh, uh, it, it's going to have a flat roof, which I understand they uh, did that because they thought it would be more palatable. But I'm trying to think about 221 units, air conditioning units, on the roof, humming at the same time. So, you know, it's going to be a little difficult to sit out and drink a cup of coffee or whatever, and, you know, without a lot of noise. I mean, 221, that's, that's a lot of noise. So I'm concerned about that as well. Um, and also I'm concerned about uh, the property values. Uh, that, you know, the fact it's zoned for single family homes, that's what's there. And when you put this kind of a, of a project there, I, th I think, and it was confirmed to me today by a realtor friend of mine that it, that it would affect property values. Uh, and so, those are my concerns, and I uh, would respectfully request that 
y'all deny uh, the request to rezone this property from R2 to uh, long form PDR. And uh, with that, I appreciate you hearing me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Critcher. Mr. Crane, would you like to say anything else? Well, yes, sir. I, I think the, the as far as the density is concerned, the city's rules on elderly housing, and that's what the cities call it, the city's rules call it, allows up to 36 units per acre. So the density here is really below what could the city could approve under its under its rules. The reality is is that these residents will um, not the, the, the units are themselves are fairly small and they typically will be occupied by one or two at the most. Most of them will be one one uh, person per unit. And the traffic that these one these types of residents will create in terms of vehicle vehicular traffic is much proven to be much, much smaller than uh, single family residential. So we believe that the density is appropriate. It allows the, the units allow for adequate room for each each resident. Um, as far as the air conditioning units are concerned, we would are going to install a system where there's a central. Um, there's not going to be a th 221 central air conditioning units. There's one uh, unit that is a new system that carrier and other manufacturers uh, create that basically can put all those condensers into one unit and allow the residents to even have heat and air conditioning at the same time, which is important to, to uh, an age-restricted development. So we, I, we don't think that the density is inappropriate. We've purposefully looked talk to the neighbor, neighbors very closely and, and carefully to make sure that everything that we're doing uh, would be uh, acceptable to them and I think generally uh, have, have done a good job of that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Commissioners, any questions, comments? Commissioner Cox. Speaking of the density, isn't this, you know, just as you go up the, the parkway there at the top of the hill, obviously, is Fox Ridge. Yes, sir. Um, and I think, are you familiar with what the density is? Or maybe Joe knows. It's seemed like it's a little bit, they have less units, but I think the footprint's probably a little smaller, too. Do you know if it's probably comparable yeah. density? To I think Fox the density is real comparable if you take the area that they actually use yeah. versus the area that, uh, that they actually use, plus the number of units they have. Um, I'm, I'm not, some of the area, they may own property around them that's undeveloped. Thank you, Commissioner Cox. Other commissioners. Is, 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 Ms. Patel. is there anything material you can add? I really, I really wish you uh, uh, submit a card. I, I didn't feel like it was going to. Okay. All right. You're. <laughs> I have questions that the PLA be in place. We have had several meetings. We have looked into this for the last three months. We, at first, were very disconcerted that it was going to happen. We would like for it not to, but it is inevitable. We also know of Crane Holdings' secondary plan, which you will allow because it's R2, and it's going to be 64 homes in that small little area. It will not be anywhere near the quality or what we want. There what they have proposed as a senior living center, we will not be disturbed by those people. If you have 64 little houses, there will be children, they will be climbing the hill. Mr. Crane has done everything that we have asked. He forgot to mention that we said we wanted it to be gated and fenced, and he agreed with that as well. We have ask that we get to view any plans. We have asked that he be very careful with the water runoff. One of our residents is a water management engineer. He's going to look over all the plans. So we have looked into this, thought about this, had many meetings, and we prefer the senior living to the 64, I believe it's 64, it may be 67 little houses which will produce a lot of noise, racket, and lights. We've also addressed the dumpster problem, and he's agreed to that too. Thank you. Wow. 
Thank you, Ms. Bell. Other commissioners? Commissioner Bubbis? I have a few comments here. Um, this application to me is, is, I like it a lot better than the, the Champagnol um, application there for the senior living there. And I've made a, new, a few notes as to why I like it a lot better. Um, as far as the access, the access is on Chennault Parkway. Rather than on the other application with Champagnol, it was on that residential street rather than on the main primary commercial drive. So I think that is a, a superior thing to look at in, in comparison to that. Um, I think also there with the other application, there was there's a park right across from it that is a private park. And if there's children there, what have you, um, that's a high potential for trespass. Um, obviously, we don't see a bunch of T-shirts here that are green tonight. So we actually have community support for this application, uh, except for our friend here. So um, from the board of, of, of this application. Um, the buffer, let's talk about the buffer. There's over, there's 100 trees that we're talking about here that, and the buffer is better than the other application buffer. Um, so in my opinion, a lot of those adverse impacts that we talked about with the residents that were behind the other application. So um, the parking, the parking, the lights are not gonna be facing the houses like they are in the other application. So there's a variety of reasons that I hope the board, when they look at the other one, votes that one down and I hope they vote this one in. So I, I think this is a superior application. As she said, she pointed out that the community does support it. So I will be supporting this item as well. Thank you, Commissioner Bubbis. Any other questions or comments before we entertain a motion? I move for the approval of item number 26 with uh, all staff recommendations and comments except that of denial. I second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the application uh, with all staff recommendations, except that for denial. Those approve the motion, raise your right hand. Those who do not approve the mo motion, raise your right hand. It's two to eight. Eight passes. Thank you very much. Uh, any system communication, communication, uh, other business? Seeing none, then we stand adjourned.